everybody doing tonight? Yeah, somebody said we start on time. We do start on time. We don't mess around around here. It's a professional production, period. Where's the party at? Right here. Yo, this chat, by the way, has been going on for days. Like, there's been so much back chat before this even started. I don't even know where to begin. The comments before it even started, it's too good. What's up? What's up, everybody? Ooh, I forgot to get water. I might have to take a two second break to get some water. This will be the first, I think, the first time I've ever left my room during a live stream. All right, guys. So, wow. I'm I'm excited tonight. This should be a big stream. There should be a lot of people here tonight. There's a lot of eyes. During Ryder posted on his Instagram. We had um, Sunfruit Dan post on his Instagram and Facebook. Bart's been going nuts with the uh, Bart's been going nuts also with the promotions. So this is like full full production here. Full production here. My alerts should be working, I hope. So uh, whether somebody subscribes or whether they donate, any super chats will hopefully pop up with the new alerts. I'm really stuck for those. Ooh, I'm talking a little too loud. Let me let me crank it down just a hair. What's up, Hailman? How you doing, buddy? I've been watching your live streams. I've been popping in there. Are we discussing DR's hair? Uh, you know, guys, <laughs> we've got three firecracker men popping in here tonight. I don't know what's going to happen. We have to keep it under control. I'm going to moderate. I'm going to play the police here. And you know what? I'm going to have to play probably to defend Durian Ryder a little bit tonight. It's Let's be fair here. It's kind of a two versus one situation. Plus, you know, you have me in here as well. I can't be, you know, everybody can't be 3v1 Durian Ryder. Although it is going to be a little battle royale, um, battle royale situation. Planet Sleaze, thank you for the $1.99. Ooh, I see the uh, I see the meat the meat emojis. Hang on, let me open something up here. The alert didn't pop off. Oh no 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 no! The, we can't have two we can't have two failed remote uh, alerts in the same week. Mm. There we go. That one's juicy, man. There we go. They're working, baby. Yes, yes. Oh man, I got the the alerts, guys. I put some time into those, so uh, that's gonna keep it spicy and fun. Eli says we're gonna get Natasha on the chat, and will Bart be wearing a wig? I, I don't know what these guys are gonna come come through with tonight. They'll be on in thirty minutes. All right, so just in case anybody's freaking out, anybody's freaking out, they're gonna be here in twenty five minutes. All right, they're ready to go. Everybody's ready to go. We'll do a little intro here. We're gonna let. We're going to let the steam build. We're going to get a feel for you guys, what you guys are up to, what you guys want to see tonight. <sighs> Mr. Kobayashi, while debate going on, maybe better mute alerts in that time. Well, the alerts won't be on their end, so the guys can uh, stay focused. That's just going to be between me and you guys. It's going to be hard to keep it keep a straight face. Gung Fu, Drew, do a live stream with Natasha without Durian Thin. Okay, okay, okay. I can't. I'm not gonna read the rest of that. I'm not gonna read the rest of that. Drew, you're looking old as a mofo, baby. Hey, look at this. I got this shaved down. I got this haircut yesterday for you guys. We got the. We got the clean whites. That's how you know I'm wise. Drew, comment on Rob Bliss. What is there to comment on? I'm glad he's not, you know, in the hospital. Um, I watched, I think Hailman had the, the drop and said that he may be seriously uh, injured in the hospital. I'm glad that's not true. I, last I heard, Rob Bliss is fine. He's doing whatever he's going to be doing. So uh, he's in Thailand, still eating fruit. Rob Bliss is the really, really skinny fruitarian guy that uh, he's in some of my, he's actually my sub, my subscriber emote. So when somebody subscribes to the channel, any new subscribers out there, make sure you hit that button. Make sure you guys hit the like button so it just pops up right to the top of the uh, recommended videos. And we just get everybody in here tonight. If I was streaming tonight and I was in the health food, carnivore, vegan space tonight, I would just shut the stream down. This is the place to be. Sorry. Who doesn't want to watch Durian Ryder and Bart K? Go at it with each other. 
Plus, Durian Rider and Sunford Dan. Ooh, welcome to the Moore Gang. Durian Rider and Sunford Dan know each other personally. They've spent lots of time in Thailand together. They've been cycling all around the world together. So, who doesn't want to see that? All right, so uh, I will discuss the rules and everything like that once the guys are on, once we have them on. So in about 24 more minutes or so, we're going to have them on, and uh, we'll discuss the exact rules. Tonight's going to be moderated by myself. Like I said, we have some pre-chosen questions that we're going to be handling here, and we're going to have a timer, and I'll explain all that. I'll explain all that as the night goes on. All right, give me a few minutes to get this all set up. It is all set up, actually, and we're going to run it from there. So we can't just have a complete chaotic environment. There's just no way that you could put these three guys in the octagon together, and they're just going to figure it out magically. You need some moderation there. I hope you guys understand. Really Organic says, last time when Dan was on, DR brought up something pretty sensitive, and I suspect that's going to happen again. Well... I've already talked to Dan about some things that can't be said online, and uh, I'll have to step in there for him if that's the case. And just we can't we can't we be having total disrespect with our contestants tonight. Um, you know, the the more well behaved our men can be, the better I think that the outcome will be. The more the audience is going to get out of it. So. Primal Edge says that uh, if he if we need a trans vegan to come on uh, and make the competition fair, then he's more than happy to help out. Primal Edge Health, by the way, is a sponsor of some of our highest dollar donation alerts. So I'm sure that's just that's all gonna work itself out. You guys are gonna like what we have going on here. I'm really happy. I'm really that's like the the most pride I've had in anything on this channel. Beyond all the guests is the alerts. It's going to keep me going. Definitely bring Tristan on. Maybe at the end. So what I'm thinking is, and you guys can let me know, get a little feedback in the in the chat here. I'm thinking we do about an hour to an hour and a half of the questions that the men submitted. Because I asked all three guys that are coming on tonight to give me questions or statements that they want to discuss on the live stream tonight. So I gave them the opportunity. They didn't have to, but I gave them the opportunity to bring in like their best topics, basically. Um, Bart gave me a full list, of course. Dan gave me a couple, and Durin Ryder is going straight freestyle. Imagine that. So uh, yeah, I'll be. I have the list of questions here, and I will be popping them out to the guys. Durin Ryder cycling tips is getting ready. Wait a second. Sounds good, man. You got about 20 more minutes. Primal Edge could definitely add a special touch to this circus. <laughs> well, we've had Durian Rider and Primal Edge on uh, my show before. We had somewhat of a debate. It wasn't as structured as tonight's going to be. By structure, guys, I mean structured in a good way. You know, we can't just we can't just have guys shouting over each other. So that's why it's structured. You know how I like to roll uncensored, though. That's, you know, we're right to the edge of demonetization. That's where my channel thrives. So trust me, there's not going to be anything, any topics off limits, but we are going to have somewhat of a flow here because we're going to get a lot more out of it. Believe me. Try to get Freely in. Freely only uh, wants to acknowledge me when she wants to say that I'm on steroids, which is a great compliment. I mean, let's be honest here. When you're 145 pounds and people are calling you out for steroids, wow, life doesn't get any better than that. Really organic. Let's all try to be generally respectful in the chat, friends. We're all humans and all in this together. LOL. I like the LOL. You know, you know how that's going to translate. People are just like, whatever, wrench. Of course, Durian Riders freestyling it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Mr. Kobayashi, ever reached out to get Goji Man on the stream? I have actually. Yes, I have. I doubt this can this guy can make a coherent sentence when not scripted, and even those are borderline drivel. You know, all right. Look, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a statement for all the jump cut content creators out there. Number one, jump cutting is actually really useful for keeping the audience's attention. 
<laughs> if you jump cut, it makes your video way more entertaining. Like people, people absorb things like crack. Like they, they need that hit, you know? And if you jump cut and you're in between every sentence, not everybody can just flow all their facts together. And if you're reading off of a script, like you really need to cover topics, certain points, you need to, you need to jump cut. There's no way you can talk to the camera, talk to the camera, eye contact, read your script, come back to the camera. It doesn't work that way. It's actually pretty hard. Um, it's pretty hard to make a, a coherent video if you want to cover specific topics without jump cutting. And it keeps the audience more involved. So don't... It's not a carnivore versus vegan thing. Um, I've made videos where I jump cut. And whenever you see me do a video where there's... Um, you know, where I have a voiceover, that's, that's jump cutted. It's just you can't tell because I take pauses in between what I'm saying when I'm reading off the screen and I'm making up the next point and I cut out that five to six second, 10 second gap or whatever it is. And it sounds like it's perfectly fluid. By the way, guys. Oh, no, no. I actually do have it on low latency. Okay, never mind. I'm tripping. I was going to put it on normal, normal delay tonight so that it's actually easier for more people to watch the stream. But I find that the delay is way too long. It's like a 10, 15, 20 second delay between what we're saying on camera and what's going on in the chat. I hate that. Durian Rider says, B12 injections for superior athleticism. What other kind of injections there, buddy? Redheaded Princess says, I've talked to Goji Man about health an hour on Skype and he's super sharp and coherent. Yeah, I bet he is. I really bet he is. And also he was on uh, Primal Edge Health and Primal Edge Health Tristan uh, said he was a good guy too, so it's all good. Meat Lover says, I'm new to all this YT fun, but thoroughly enjoying it. Drew is one of the most rational channels besides Bart's and glad you are collaborating. Oh yeah, baby. I've had Bart on my show before as a full thorough interview. Back when I first found out about him, I was genuinely just like so blown away by his content. Like finally we have like a real scientist that actually can interpret data, understands the math behind everything and can break down what is a good scientific study and what's not. That's my opinion on Bart. People can say what he wants. He obviously has a very strong position on a lot of things. The way that he gives information is very, very powerful and strong. And uh, he's a uh, half Kiwi, half new uh, Australian. So you know he's got that. You know he's got that mouth. So a lot of people are offended by him, and that's not my problem. Nervous for Durian Rider, Charles says. Nah, Durian Rider. He always conducts himself with the highest honor, the highest. Uh, he brings. He brings it. He brings it. Durin Rider's a bulldog. He could hold his own with a pack of wolves. Well, that's debatable. But I do love him. Eli the Science Guy says, Drew, second only to medical medium and health advice. <laughs> uh, just kidding, homie. Thanks. All right. I'm glad you guys are... I'm glad you guys are enjoying the uh, the content recently. I'm having a lot of fun making this stuff. I put, I put more effort into the channel the past two weeks than I have any time before this. I've put crazy amounts of hours in the last week or two. And hopefully it pays off. Hopefully you guys are enjoying what we're putting into this. Just from setting up the the guys, from getting the questions together, setting up the, the Streamlabs alerts, getting everything going, making it just look more professional. And hopefully it's just seamless. 15 minutes till everybody comes on. We're just kind of warming up here. If you're new to if you're new to the stream and you're just joining us today, make sure you hit the like, boost the stream up as high as you can. The more people in the chat, the better. The more crazy it's going to get and uh the more fun it's going to be. Man, Planet Slee's coming through with the $1.99 donations like crazy so far. Just the beginning tonight. During rider cycling tips. Mm. That one's juicy, man. I met that Rob Bliss dude in Deval. Straight up told him he's got anorexia. Wow. Yeah. Duran Rider, not afraid to tell somebody that uh, <laughs> they've got a health issue. More sugar. The fruit. Loot gear. Carnivores are getting insane on YouTube. Well, 
I'm guessing you're from the vegan community or non carnivore community, but welcome. Welcome, Luke Gear. Everybody's welcome here. Whether you're vegan or not, keep it like keep it to the edge of uh, demonetization. That's where that's where I like the chat to stay. Don't be outright rude to each other. You can try and be rude to me. It's okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be offended, most likely. First time watching Drew Moore. Hey, what's up, Logical Links? Tristan brought me here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I always love collaborating with Tristan. Mm. That one's juicy, man. Ah, uh, thank you, Redheaded Princess. Appreciate your dedication. Keep it up. Thank you so much, guys. 177 watching. Yeah, we don't even have the guys on yet. It's definitely going to get deep tonight. Drew Morgan, what's your height and weight if you're only 145? I'm one, I'm 5'10". I have like a super light frame. I mean, look at my wrist, man. Veganism did this to me. Like, I got to see a little bone there. I mean, I'm putting on the mask right now, though. I'm definitely starting to gain some weight, though. I've been heavy on the meat. Also, guys, let's throw this little tidbit in here right now. I'm, uh, I'm trying to gain a bit here. So, I'm also trying to just control any type of possible digestive dysfunction I may have. Been doing a little research on the Heal Your Gut guy. That guy's got some really good information on YouTube about fungal infections in your gut, candida overgrowth, um, how to kill the infection using you know different herbs, garlics, basic stuff. Like nothing woo-woo, nothing crazy, salt, and removing a lot of the stuff that's injuring your gut. I really recommend it if you guys are struggling out there. You guys have like a white tongue. You guys are having bloating or gas. You definitely have to go check out Heal Your Gut guy on YouTube. Big shout out to that guy. I'm, I'm going to try and get him on the channel as well. Yeah, the fungal infections can be can be tough. Yes. Drew Org looks jacked. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a... We got to peel this. Oh, got to peel it back there. Fungal Farts said he's an expert on the fungal side of things. Uh, okay, well, tell us more. What, what do you know? What do you know, baby? Okay, we got to send the invites out to the boys. Get them all situated. Durian Rider, I'm going to send in a few minutes. I saw you there asking about it. I'll be sending the links out to you guys in a few. Start the meeting now. Hopefully this thing doesn't crash. Because last time I tried to use uh, Zoom, I did not have good results with it. But we we updated it, and hopefully it doesn't have any issues tonight. Hopefully no malfunctions. That's what I'm hoping for. Drew looks Jack next to that Jack vegan video clip. <laughs> <laughs> hey Drew, can you elaborate more on how you overcome your anxiety issues? I just made a video on that recently. Um, I don't know if you saw that one. If you have more questions about it, you can ask me, but I recommend watching that first. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, overcoming anxiety, man, get a good diet under you, exercise, go outside, breathe fresh air as much as you can, get around friends, don't sit around playing video games all day. Don't sit around watching YouTube all day if you're that type of person that gets in your head and starts getting all crazy depressed. And anything that you have a trigger, any triggers that you may have, you have to face them. Like, do whatever you have to do to get in front of those triggers. You're going to feel anxious. You're going to feel that panicky, terrible effect. And you just have to keep exposing yourself to it. And at some point, it's going to go away. Now, some people have different anxiety from food and stuff like that. I, I didn't expect, I never experienced that. Mine was situational type anxiety, situational panic attacks. That's not how mine was. All right. I'm going to defocus here for like two seconds, guys. I've got to send the invites out to the boys. How do you, there we go. Like first time ever using Zoom, so hopefully things go off without a hitch here. <laughs> I 
Durian Rider's e- Durian Rider's email is, is funny. His email address that is. Okay. We got one invite out for that for that man. All right, there we go. Invite sent out. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and we're back. Just like that. Sicilian says, both of you are right. DR and Drew, fruit and meat are the way to go. I, you know, I like, I like that combo. I like the fruit and meat combo. Okay, so... Hopefully the men uh, will not have any technical issues and things go off without a hitch. And that'll be that. We'll be good to go. Yes, perfect. Okay, everything looks good on my end. So we're going to have, uh, what, three guests on tonight, bringing them on live. We're winging this. We've done it many times before, but we're using Zoom tonight, which is a whole different program. It's going to allow me to have a little more control over the situation. I'm going to have the moderation powers over the chat. I'm going to be able to mute somebody if I need to, if they're talking too much, if they're getting too crazy, and uh, that will be good for everybody involved. Because you know, you know how it goes. I don't want to name names, but we've got some ferocious mouths tonight. Eli says, DR can talk S with the best of them, but in an MMA fight, I think Bart takes him round one TKO. I don't know. Have you guys seen... Durian Rider's uh, kick kick compilation on YouTube. He's uh he's got some mean kicks. He's damn near professional Thai boxer. Evan Gray says anxiety is caused by repeated negative thoughts accompanied by high cortisol, lower cortisol, and do more activities that raise endorphins in the brain. Eating red meat helps too. I do agree with that. You know, the crazy thing, though, is that I was probably eating the most amount of red meat and doing the most amount of exercise in my life when anxiety hit me the most. So really, it does come down to, you know, you just having to face that that thing that's causing you to have that stress. It really is just what it is. That's how I got over it. Either that or time. But yeah, I don't I don't. Somebody mentioned meds and stuff like that in the chat. I did try that actually. I did actually get prescribed um, some sort of like new age, you know, antidepressant or whatever. And that was terrible. It was terrible. Billy Pollock says, when are you debating Frankie versus vegan gains? Uh, I am not going to, you know, I'll interview. Well, actually, Frankie is going to come on soon. Hopefully I'm going to interview him. Uh, Vegan gains, you know, I should probably get him on for just like a straight up interview as well. Would you guys want to see that? Do you guys want to see Vegan Gains just a straight up interview? I think they've had enough debates. I don't think anybody wants to see Frank versus Vegan Gains. It's going to be a study war, uh, a, a scientific study battle. I think that's just boring, man. It puts me to sleep. We're going to do it my style here on the channel. Vegan Gains to join us. Well, you guys keep... Keep checking in the chat if anybody like Vegan Gains pops up here. We'll have to give them a shout out. You know, they don't do it for me, but we'll give it, we'll do it for them. Billy Pollock wants to see a debate between Vegan Gains and Frankie. Okay. I think, I think uh, this can become a place for future debates. Once I set up this model tonight, the way that we do it, I think it's going to become a standard in the business. I want to be like the Dana White promoter of the uh the battles we've got we've got a bart k in the chat bart can you hear me yo hello hello sir we'll keep you here for a minute until the other guys arrive and then i'll probably pop all you guys on at the same time sound good super sweet all right newly awakened says i would be interested in hearing vegan gains honest divulgence on how he feels these last few years losing his mojo what makes you say he's losing his mojo though I mean, he, you know, people have their opinion on the way he looks and everything, but it's, uh, that's all debatable. We don't know how he feels really. 
Redheaded Princess is a Richard fan. Says that he's such a character and the interview would be cool. Bart, I don't know if you have your camera initiated yet, but uh, I can't see it. No, it's turned off, mate. Ah, okay. Gotcha. But you can see me, correct? Because I'm using a secondary webcam here. Yeah, you bet. Yep, all good. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sir Bart is on. That is correct. He's he's just awaiting. He's like a gladiator in the cage right now. A rodeo bull. And we've got the pin still in the slot. Drew, say something. Say something how? Caster Choi says, Vegan Gains versus Durian Rider in a debate. You want to see it? Uh, actually, I think Durian Rider asked me to get Durian... Uh, Durian Rider asked me to get Vegan Gains on, and then he wanted to, to debate him. I don't know what they would debate about. They're both vegans. What are they going to say? Redheaded Princess says, I don't think Richard is losing his mojo. I think he's just focused on his relationship and dealing with being more open about depression. He's healing, but publicly. That's a very tough thing to do. Dealing with serious, psychological, depressive type situations when you are a public figure, especially as big as he is, that is tough. Plus all the pressure and all the hate that he gets. But I mean, you got to admit, he did bring a lot of that onto himself. I find that him and his wife are quite sensitive in their chat room and on their channel. And uh, they shouldn't be so sensitive considering he basically made a series of videos that are one of the most, some of the most famous videos he has, worst of the fitness industry, calling people absolutely terrible things. And now he's surprised that there's people that don't like him. I mean, you should really, <laughs> should really think about that one. You got to be ready for the backlash if you're going to put out a bunch of shit like that. Got to be like Durian Ryder and Bart K for all that for that matter. These guys are going to put out content and they are going to accept the backlash that comes along with it. It's called being a man. Really Organic says, did you see my comment about Matt Blackburn is down to come on your stream? Four-year-old vegan now eats no veggies and lots of meat and milk. Big following, very knowledgeable. Awesome. I'll have to look him up. I don't know who he is. If you can, try and remind me later again. I know you always throw people out, but I sometimes forget them. Vegan Gains depression will only get worse because he is destroying his gut. That's true. I do agree, man. If you're like a bodybuilding vegan and you're overloading your gut with all kinds of crazy stuff, ugh, you're never going to feel better. Richard won't accept interviews. He's only interested in scoring some imaginary points during the debates. Well, see, that's why, you know, interviews, you can call it what you want. A discussion, a roundtable, uh, a debate. It's call it whatever the person wants. We're, we're here to have a conversation. Uh, two people, sometimes more, and see how it goes. And we got conscious calisthenics in the chat. He's said he's going to be here in a minute. So uh, we will let the guys pop in. I'm going to go refill my water, guys. I think I'm breaking my all-time streak of actually leaving my chair, which I'm very sad about, but I forgot to get water before I came on. So I'm going to do that. Give me one minute. I'll be right back. And we're back. How to get the water. It's going to be a long, <laughs> it's going to be a long road ahead of us. All right, let's check the zoom. We've got Bart. I see Bart. We're going to pull Bart on. 
Let's uh, let's get this over here. Make some adjustments here. Hang on one second, Bart. He's waving, but he's gonna get tired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> here he goes. There's Bart. There's Bart. Hi, boys and girls. How you doing? There's Bart. So for now, it's gonna be the Bart interview. Yay. And uh, anybody else who pops in, hopefully Durian, Mr. Durian Ryder has the email, which he should. And uh, our boy Conscious Calisthenics should have it as well. Bart, how are you doing tonight? I'm all right, mate. How are you doing? I'm good. Are you feeling revved up? Yeah, look, I've been looking forward to this. It's um, it's an interesting concept. It's it's a great it's a great format that you've put together. I, I like the fact that you that you want to moderate it instead of just having a, a shit show. Mm. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Is Dan? Well, we know that you know you're a powerful voice of reason, and you know I think that if we set things up correctly tonight, we can yeah. we can get some bigger, better batter debates and we can bait in some others as well such cool. as uh you know vegan gains and uh others if uh if we can play nice enough tonight with all the all the contestants how you doing dan like i keep telling my chat uh, i want to be to the to the line of uh demonetization but not over it you know yeah i'm good how are you man <laughs> what's up man how you doing Okay, so we got we got that, and uh, we're just waiting on Durian Ryder. Actually, we see him. So this yeah, is my okay. first time using Zoom, so hopefully this goes rather smoothly here. And actually, we're going to do this. Aha. We just have a blank box for the Mr. Durian Ryder. Seeking truth in Christ says, thoughts on a diet of raw fruit and raw dairy for athletic performance. That's a good question. You might want to... Uh, we we'll might save that one for the end. Oh, there we go. We have Durian Ryder. Okay, guys. First of all, everybody, welcome to the chat tonight. Thank you for coming in. Um, let's first get a little sound check. We got everybody. Can we all hear each other? Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah. Durian Ryder's looking amazing today. He's looking amazing. Okay, okay, oh, guys. Before we get started. Durian Ryder's right. looking amazing. He's always looking amazing. Okay, so here we go, guys. Oh, um, my um. Yeah. We are going to set a few ground rules for tonight. Okay. And uh, Natasha is distracting us as usual. Yeah. And so <laughs> here's here's what here's what we're thinking for tonight, boys. So I asked the three of you guys to input questions and statements for the discussion debate roundtable tonight. Um, Bart sent me a nice list. Dan gave me a couple ideas uh, during writers freestyling as is usually his style. So what we're going to do is I have questions set out. We have about nine questions. And what we're going to do is I'm going to ask the question. And I thought it was only fair that whoever put that question in is going to be asked the question first. So, you know, if Bart, for instance, gave me the question or topic, he will be the first in line to take that, uh, that question. All right. So we'll go around the table. We're going to do two minutes responses as we go around and then we'll do a follow-up round of of one minute responses and then i'm thinking maybe if there's some last minute words we might do like a one minute chaos free for all and then we'll just have to cut it and move to the next subject otherwise we'll just be here all night on one on one question Does that sound pretty good guys everybody clear cool so i'm gonna try and put the stopwatch on the screen here so the audience can see it. I don't think you guys can see what we got going on here, but um, I will do my best to let you guys know like where the timer is. If you got 30 seconds left or whatever, like how much more time. Okay. So everybody's pretty clear here uh, as far as those basic rules go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All good with me. All right. So the other thing too is like I keep saying to the audience and we'll say to you guys, let's keep it fairly professional um, just for the sake of time. We, uh, let's keep the jabs, uh, let's keep the jabs to a minimum afterwards. I'm thinking we can do a bit of freestyle and, uh, we'll take some questions from the audience. You know, I'm sure there's going to be some super chats as we go along. People are already asking questions and topics that they want to hear from us. And from that point, we'll 
present those at the end. And for all of you guys in the chat tonight, um, I'm going to not interrupt the guys on the channel tonight with the super chats. The super chats are majorly appreciated, of course. If there are any questions that you guys want answered, the best thing to do is probably put it in a super chat format. I will ask that at the end, okay? So again, thanks ahead of time for the super chats. I cannot interrupt them. They're going to be on a timer and each guy is going to have to concentrate and uh, do their best, okay? So um, chat, I'm going to have to pay full attention here. We've got a full house and we're going to get started. What do you guys say? Let's do it. All right. Beautiful. So, uh, first question will be, uh, do you guys want me to actually, we're just going to run this. Okay. So first question will actually be for, uh, for Bart. So we'll go Bart, Dan, Harley. Okay. Bart, do you believe saturated fat causes heart disease and how much saturated fat do you eat on a daily basis? So two questions. Do you believe saturated fat causes heart disease? And how much saturated fat do you eat on a daily basis? And I'm starting the timer now. Right. The answer is absolutely not. No, saturated fat does not cause heart disease in my professional opinion. There is no empirical evidence anywhere in the literature, neither is there any mechanism that I'm aware of by which saturated fat could possibly cause heart disease. All the major meta-analyses that have been done, and I'm aware of two, uh, show that the incidence of heart disease in populations who eat more saturated fat rather than less, and we're talking about the highest versus the lowest uh, quintiles, uh, the, the risk ratio, as it's so-called, is basically 1.0. So before we even go any further, epididlymology does not establish causality, but if you do look at the incidence rates between saturated fat and heart disease, you will find that the rates of disease are the same in populations who eat more versus people who eat less saturated fat as per the epididly doodlymology. That scuppers it. End of, end of argument there. Saturated fat, there is no, no, uh, no indication that it, that it causes heart disease whatsoever. How much saturated fat do I eat? Um, absolutely fuck tons. And for those that don't know what a fuck ton is, that's exactly 10 metric shitloads. Are, are, we, are we passing it? Done. Flawless. Okay, you had a you had a spare thirty seconds there. Good job, Bar. That's a, that's a way to start awesome. it. Uh, Dan, would you like me to re repeat the question, or do you want to just run with it? I just want to run with it. I want to ask Durian Ryder. Is the reason why he's got like a hairpiece going on? Is it due? Okay, to okay, the, okay, okay. The hairpiece. Okay, listen. We'll have to listen. All <laughs> this. We'll have to stay on track here. Okay, okay. we got to stay on track here. Save any personal questions and comments towards the end. Okay. okay. Now, Dan, do you believe saturated fat causes heart disease and how much saturated fat do you eat on a daily basis? No, from the research I've looked into, there's no clinical peer-reviewed studies whatsoever to prove that it causes heart disease whatsoever. Just like the myth around cholesterol causing heart, like heart disease and shortening people's lifespan, what I've seen is from certain studies that have been done with cholesterol, for example, the people, the, the people in the world that have been found like in specific areas who consume the most cholesterol have the lowest mortality rate. So it seems it's just a lot of general myths promoted that's talked about by people like Joel Kahn and other vegan doctors and people that apparently know what they're talking about spreading so much BS, like completely. And I used to believe loads of this stuff and it ruined my health in a negative way. And this is why I think people like Bart K are a really amazing person to listen to. They actually knows what they're talking about. And they're not just programmed with dogma and ideologies. It's like he actually understands physiology. He understands how the body works, the mechanisms and so forth. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, I don't think saturated fat is an issue. And I eat loads as well. I eat so much steak every day and so many other animal foods, beef tallow, chicken, and so on, it makes me feel amazing. It helped me resolve all my issues that have been induced within me on a vegan diet because I wasn't getting all these saturated fat and essential fatty acids I need to thrive. So yeah, that's my opinion on that. How much are you eating per day on a daily basis, did you say? <laughs> no idea. I have no idea. I can tell you I'm eating around 250 grams to 300 grams of protein, but saturated fat, I'm, I have no idea whatsoever. But no limit of any sort? No. Why would I need to limit it? My body needs it. My mind needs it. My organs need it for me to feel the best. It's like, 
yeah, it's absolutely fine. Okay. Well, thank you for the answer. And we will move on to uh, Mr. Durian Ryder. Are you, do you need me to repeat the question there, sir? Or would you like to no, run no. with it? Yeah, I understand the question. How's the audio? Uh, the audio is a little bit patchy. If you could maybe get a microphone, external microphone going, that would be good. I'm having to mute you in between. Yeah, I'll try and find some earphones. Do you want earphones in? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It'll be better yeah. than nothing. Yeah. Like in the shirt, bro. I told you, Durian Rider's coming professional. He's always coming with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can't hear you there. Durian Rider. That rug is fucking sexy though, isn't it, Drew? Uh, yeah, no, the rug looks pretty good. I've just vacuumed today, actually, so... Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I want one. <laughs> okay, okay, so... <laughs> we'll get to that bar. Um, like, can I get one of those, Harley, or what? Okay, I mean, okay, okay. Uh, Durian Rider, is, he's got the floor, guys. He's got the floor. We're going to cut it. We're going to cut into his time here if we, if we don't right, run so here this. we go. The timer's going to cause half of these, I would say, maybe... But what I would see is that there's nobody out there in the keto carnival world who's reversing heart disease on a keto diet. We have got all the vegan, the plant-based, vegetarian, high-carb, low-fat. Research suggests, not suggests, but they are reversing heart disease. There's not a single carnival keto meathead person out there who's doing a study showing they're reversing heart disease. So there's data, and they can debate that, but there's no real-world facts out there. There's no real-world examples. So I'm a, I'm a real-world person. I like real world evidence. And so does it does saturated fat cause heart disease? I don't know, but what I do know is people eat a lot of saturated fat, meat, eggs, dairy, have a higher incidence of heart disease. And that's personal friends I've known, will meet a friend, North Queensland died from heart disease. A local naturopath here was in the biggest report, more meat thing, he died from heart disease, had a heart attack. I mean, I used to have a lot of chest pain back when I was eating a lot of meat and that went away. So, you know, and there's the people out there, the Esselstein, Barnard, McDougall, who were reversing heart disease on a high carb, low fat, high sugar, vegan diet, even Dr. Ornish. And I, just, I don't see anyone from the, the meat world doing that. I haven't seen anyone doing that. In fact, what they do is they give you a stent, they give you a triple bypass, they give you medication because the meat diet, it ain't helping your heart. And that's based, not on my opinion, but based on observations of anyone out there who's observing it. So we can look at data and analyze data, but where's the real world evidence? You know, it's like people talking about the, the earth is flat or whatever. It's like, hey, that's cool. You have that opinion. 20 seconds. Show me, show me the edge of the earth, you know, and then I'll start believing you. Show me that you're reversing someone's heart disease with a meat-based diet, a fat-based diet. Show me. I haven't seen that. What I have seen, though, is the x-rays and the angiograms of people opening up the arteries once they go high-carb, low-fat, vegan, and get meals from the fat intake. So... That's what I see, and um, I'm open to suggestions. But so far, nobody Oops. in the meat world would tell me otherwise. And how much are you eating per day, real quick? What do I eat per day? Yeah, carbs, carbs. No, carbs, no, no. Carbs. How much saturated fat? I have saturated fat, so maybe a couple of grams a day. Unless I'm a couple of grams. Those vegan pizzas. So yeah, with vegan cheese. All right, so uh, we'll move to Bart again, and we'll do one minute hot rounds. And in the meantime, I don't know if you can maybe dial in your audio a little bit. I'll, I'll have to mute you in between, but uh, that was good. So um, we'll then pass it over to you, Bart, and we'll go for uh, for a one minute round there. Okay. Right. Number one, Harley, uh, real world evidence is data, my friend. The data does not support what you're saying about the incidence of heart disease and saturated fat intake. Uh, so that argument there is bunk. Secondly, the diet you're talking about, the Esselstyn stuff with the reversing of heart disease on a, on a vegan diet actually wasn't a vegan diet. If you go and look at the paper, my friend, you'll find that it included significant amounts of dairy and eggs as well. So that's not a vegan diet reversing heart disease. Thirdly, the reason that the, the data from the carnivore people doesn't exist is because the carnivore trend is a new one in recent times, although we've been eating a carnivore diet for nearly 400,000 years. Uh, recently, not so often. It happens because of a thing called the Randall cycle. You might want to look it up and teach yourself something about the Randall cycle there, Harley, I would say, basically. So that's basically that one in a nutshell. There you go. All right. Clean and concise. Beautiful. All right. So, uh, Dan, any response to that? We'll start your timer in about you know, two all seconds. I'd say is just because, all I'd say is just because that hasn't necessarily been other diets that have scientific research and evidence that's been clearly shown 
to reverse heart disease doesn't mean another diet can't reverse heart disease. And like Bart K was saying, and I thought the same thing, it's like how many studies have been done, like clinical peer reviewed studies on people on long term carnivore or keto diets? They're just not out there. This people starting to do it. Sean Baker's doing a study at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah, I will agree with Durham Ryder, though. It has been shown that people on this vegan ish type of diet have started to unblock the arteries for sure. But um, I wouldn't say that necessarily a carnivore diet could cause it or meat. It's like people that get in heart disease don't eat a carnivore or keto diet. They're eating so much sugar and processed foods and gluten and all of the other refined crap. Like, pff, is there people as of yet getting heart like heart disease on a carnival diet, a keto diet, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it will happen in the future. Who knows? But I don't see any evidence of that so far. All I see is people just improving in every way possible. Gotcha. And we've got your time up and we'll unmute the, uh, the, the man over here, Harley. So, uh, any further response to that? You got a minute? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, I mean, where, like I said, people claiming that Esselstein is feeding people with eggs and dairy. It's just like such nonsense. Yeah, it's such nonsense. The evidence is there, the real life examples. How's my audio, by the way? Is it better? It's a little better. Uh, it's just a little yeah. quiet. I don't know if you could turn it up, but we'll deal with that after. Go ahead and riff yeah, okay. with it. So it, it's just, that's, and these people are on a high carb, low fat, vegan, or plant based diet, whatever you want to call it. And they're not doing that on carnivore. No one's doing that. No one's saying, hey, look, here's my angiogram. Here's my x-rays of my arteries. Here's my calcium scores. No one's actually showing that. You know, no one's showing mm -hmm. that. That's that's so, simply untrue, Harley. That's yeah, a lie. We'll, we'll, we'll give them 10 seconds, seconds and then we'll... Prove it. But we'll prove do it, bro. Send us the links. Show us the x-rays. Yeah, I'll prove happily do that for bro. you, Harley. There are prove plenty it, of man. carnivores who are showing their CAC scores. Yes. So many of them but are. The x-rays. But you can fudge that. You can't fudge an x-ray. Show me that. Okay, so anything you like, like, buddy. <clears throat> so, uh, like, well, right, listen, stuff. you guys can talk amongst yourselves. We're gonna we're gonna let it run for two minutes. So feel free to say whatever you want at this point. Mics are open. But, you know, show us it. it, it but do you do a keto diet or what do you eat? Do you eat my diet? my diet, Harley, is probably ninety five percent carnivore across time. There are one or two bits of plant matter that sneak in there because I'm a human being, um, but mostly so you're in a keto diet. Um, it's a form of ketogenic diet, I guess. Yeah. Or oh, like, there's not a form. Is do you eat carbohydrates? When's the last time you had rice, fruit, pasta, etc.? Very, very little of that goes into my into my mouth at all at any time. Cool. When was the last time you did that? You had any oh, carbohydrates? Week, weeks ago. Weeks ago. Weeks ago. So you're in ketosis right now. If we tested the ketone strip, I, I imagine possibly. I have. Possibly. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I ate. I ate fairly recently, so that may well take me out of ketosis, actually. But what did you eat? Do we take you out of ketosis? Oh, look, a typical meal would be, you know, a couple of steaks. And that would take you out of ketosis? Yeah, yeah quite, it can do. Yeah, because protein yeah, involved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Why is that? Why would it take you out of ketosis? Well, because of gluconeogenesis, Harley. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So it will convert the protein into glucose, so then the insulin will go up and then it will break out of ketosis. You need to have about 80% of your calories coming from fat to stay in ketosis. So a lot of people on a carnival diet won't actually be in a state of ketosis due to glucogenesis happening. Just while we are here though, Harley, I found it really interesting that you said that your saturated fat intake is in the sort of one or two grams range per day. I, I just wonder how much fiber do you take in, buddy? 20 seconds, Question, guys. Maybe. I don't know exactly if it varies day to day. Sometimes it's white rice, sometimes it's lots of bananas, sometimes it's lots of sugar. Okay, well, let me quote you. you, said you let today. me quote you, Harley. You said you take in a lot of fiber in your diet. Is that a fair statement or not? Yeah. What do you think happens to that fiber once it, once it hits your colon, mate? We'll let Harley answer that and then we're going to move on. You shit it out. Nobody. No, fermentation, mate. Of, fermentation. Of, of the, of well, okay, the, okay. the non-metabolizable carbohydrates into what? Short chain, saturated fatty acids, buddy. So yeah, let, body let, let's ask you again: How much saturated fat do you intake? Probably maybe, maybe more. Maybe a more. lot more than you're saying, buddy. A lot more. Okay, let's go so ahead why, and move why, on, guys. Why, Remember why, that yeah. Harley does have a uh, a bidet installed on his toilet with a hose, so he doesn't need to really worry about what happens after it leaves the rectum. Good, good, good. All okay, right, so good let's move on to the next question here, boys. Uh, this one's going to be starting with Dan. Okay, um, now. Dan has made a statement and I've kind of reversed yeah. I've put it into a question. 
So high carb vegan diets have been linked to binge eating and weight gain, especially in females. Do you agree or disagree? This one, we're going to start with Dan. Uh, we'll go Harley and we'll go Bart. Okay, Dan. So I'm someone that's lived in Thailand for years. I've went to the fruit festival about two or three times in a row. I know so many people that have eaten the raw till four diet. Most of them are very young. That's what I want to say. Most of them are 20 year old, like in their twenties, people come and go all the time. You don't really see older people normally eating it. And what happens with so many of them, they are lean. And then they just say, you can eat unlimited calories. Durham Rider freely said that many times before. And they end up gaining so much weight. And then they say it's due to, because they had an eating disorder, like they've been bulimic or something before. And there's an issue going on with their metabolism. So then they're gaining weight and they're healing, which is a load of garbage. It's like, no, actually what's happening is you're giving them an excess of calories. So then the insulin is going up. It's storing the additional fuel that they're not using from the, the food and storing it as fat. And then they gain loads of weight. And they say, oh, it's just because they got an issue with their metabolism due to their past eating habits, which is a load of garbage. Okay. Uh, you're going to pass that one? Yeah. All right. Keep your energy up there, Harley. Keep it going. He's high carb. Okay, Harley, uh, go ahead and uh, run Carb with that. the Would you fuck like me up, to... mate. Carb the fuck up. <clears throat> Would you like so, me to repeat the well, question? It was the question again. High carb vegan diets have been linked to binge eating and weight gain, especially in females. Do you agree well, or disagree? Go ahead and I'd, go with that. I'd say I probably disagree with that. What I would agree with, though, is... He said stuffing his face with food. <laughs> You're jealous, bro. You have to starve yourself to stay lean. I have to eat to stay lean. I'm not starving, you clown. <clears throat> okay, anyway. Stay on topic here, boys. So we have... Yeah, yeah, I see that a lot. You know, I'll see people, they come from anorexia, and then they're eating enough calories again, and they're just, you know, they're eating a lot. Of what they, They're eating what they need to eat. And so that's called adaptive thermogenesis, where your body's just storing a lot more weight than you need uh, weight no, so not you're storing the weight you need but you're going to store more weight than you would otherwise if you had never done a water fast or a juice fast or just eating fruit a little bit of fruit every day for a couple of years or whatever and so you go into adaptive thermogenesis where let's say you had a twin sister who was eating two and a half thousand three thousand calories a day she'll stay slim but you want to gain all this weight because your metabolism your insulin your ghrelin your leptins all out of whack and so you're also called adaptive thermogenesis you see it in the the keto world, the carnival world, the, the bodybuilding fitness world where people take steroids or clenbuterol to starve themselves. And then after the show, they're just binging out and they just gain like, you know, 10, 20 pounds in a week. That's really, you know, you see that a lot over the last 20, 20 something years of being a personal trainer. So it's not from the fruit or the rice or whatever, you know, it's from the, the starvation beforehand. What I do see though is people sneaking food. We had one girl seconds. there a few years ago, Julia. She was eating KFC, she was eating dairy chocolate. And she gained like 30 kilos, you know, and uh, people were like using her as an example. And I'm like, no, no, use, always use my girlfriends as an example. Always use my girlfriends as an example because they're girls who live with me and are trained mm. by me. Don't use some mm. random psychopath on, you know, medications that cause weight gain as well. Always use Duran Rider's girlfriends over history. And that's what your best, best result there. So, yeah. Okay. Don't use a couple of Fricos or anorexics in recovery mode. Okay. Quick comment by the moderator. Trouble. Well, you're you're cut off there. We're going to move to Bart next. Uh, I do happen to know some girls that live with Durin Rider that did gain quite a bit of weight. Bart, we're going to move on with you uh, now. Yep. Okay. So obviously you eat a diet which is high in carbohydrates. Those carbohydrates will break down into blood glucose. That blood glucose will cause an insulin response that will rape your blood sugar down lower than what it was before you consume those carbohydrates and make you hungry again soon after. That's why you have to sit there and stuff your face with whatever the hell it is that Harley's stuffing his face with there to keep his energy up so he doesn't fall over because his blood sugar would otherwise fall through the floor because his insulin's all out of whack, probably. It's, it's, it's simple biochemistry. It's simple facts. It can't be refuted. People have come up with this ridiculous idea of the GI scale that says that one thing carbs is better than another. Uh, I've dealt with that on my channel. Go and have a look at it. It basically shows that actually all carbs are the devil's spunk and should be avoided in the diet at all costs. There you go. Done. Okay. Uh, well, then we'll move back to Dan. We'll do one minute rounds and we'll go back around again. Anything you want to add to that, Dan? I can understand why Durham Rice says what he says, but he doesn't seem to understand basic physiology and the mechanisms in the body as to why the hard carb diet can cause people to gain weight. And guess what happens 
when people go on a ketogenic diet, the insulin is so low, so they're not storing the food as excess fat on the body and you become satiated for so long, so you don't need to eat so often. And guess what? People end up losing weight so quickly. It is insane. I've never seen anyone switch to a ketogenic diet and gain loads of weight due to them having eating disorders before or any of that. Mm. It doesn't make any sense why a diet would do that whatsoever. If you're not eating too many calories and you're eating a diet where it isn't making blood sugar levels go up, up, up and down all day long, there's no reason why you should gain loads of fat first and then um, actually lose it afterwards. And there's so many girls that have been on that diet where Darren Rogers just keeps telling them, eat more and more and more. you just got to put on the excess fat and it's just a part of the process. And then guess what? When they stop eating that way, they lose all the weight very quickly and they don't have that issue anymore. Okay, thank you for the response, Dan. We're going to move forward. Duran Ryder, you got a minute? Yep, I said who, who was who did who lived with men who was fat? <clears throat> uh, I don't really want to give out names. Let's just say it's it's one hundred percent in the bag confirmed. Man. Well, I can give it. I can give an example of reason because there was one girl who lived with me in Philly. She was on man. antidepressant medication. It was it was a couple years back. A couple years back. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking juicy, about. Yeah, she was on medication that caused weight gain. SSRI medication. That one's juicy, on that, man. They, they blew it out. Doesn't matter how pure you're eating. Mm. You're on that medication, you get animal. That one's juicy, they, 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 man. So, I was on that medication mm. for some time, Harley, and I didn't Why gain. That one's juicy, man. Some people gain, some people don't. You said anybody put on SSRIs will gain weight. Yeah, that one's juicy, well, man. Hey guys, give me one second. My stream is freaking out. That my uh, juicy, man. audio. Ask any you can't, you can't just make ask blanket statements, Harley, and expect man. not to be corrected when you get it wrong. You've got it wrong. Ask any, okay, ask any mental health nurse. That one's juicy, man. Mental health nurses are not trained in medications, right. Harley. They are trained in Neither mental health juicy, nursing. I'm you, trained in physiology. You're a uni lecturer. You're not even a real doctor. Hang on one second, man. guys. Give me one second. What makes you think a doctor is any better than Pause the combo, please, guys. One second, guys. Okay, yeah, well, what I would say is in some cases, people from SSR could get weight gain, but it's not why is this freaking out? the reason why people gain that weight juicy, on man. the diet that Harley promotes, in my opinion. Mm. In some cases, maybe, but a lot of times, that people juicy, man. that are females seem to gain mm. weight when they're not on SSRIs. Uh, okay. That one's juicy, man. Yeah, a lot, a lot of time mm. they, they come from the, you know anorexia and they're healing. So Holy it shit. It's, it's case by case. But hey, I've got the best track, track record. All my girlfriends are always slim, hot. And have great results. So if it, someone says cards make you fat, then Natasha, who was with me, should be getting fat as heck and social freely, and all the girls over the Atori and yeah. The well, the thing is, when a girl is so young and looks like they've just come out of school, they can get away with eating God knows all types of things and still be lean. I used to be able to do that. So many people could do that at a young age. Yeah, if you're calorie restricting, you can, but not if you're eating as much as you want. I agree. If you're calorie restricting, you can eat a Big Mac a day, no worries. But if you're eating as much as you want, like Natasha does, or freely, or Tori, or any of the girls. You can't stay lean on that standard meat diet. You can't. You can't. Look at all the guys in the gym who are doing steroids and eating meat, and they still have to cut, do cutting diets to get lean. Yeah. yeah, but when you're taking steroids, you're also making your estrogen levels go up, and a lot of them don't take aromatized inhibitors to actually block the excess estrogen, which will make them gain water weight and excess fat as, as well. But how okay. would you know you've never used steroids? You have any personal experience with that? Oh, I've studied it like crazy, though. It's a very and interesting you, you topic. You can study whatever, but you've never used it, so you're not an authority there. Unlike you, Harley, because apparently you have used steroids. For sure. So have yeah, you, guys, you your hair. No, I've never taken steroids in my life. It's quite a compliment. I can tell by your neck you have. I can no, tell by your head. Never, your neck you I have. have never taken steroids, Harley. That's ridiculous. How, how old are All you, right, guys? The, the bonus, the bonus round am, The bonus right. round is over, guys. Let's let's go ahead and move on here. All right, Darren Ryder, you'll be starting this, this hot round here. Uh, <laughs> hot round. What... <laughs> what do you th what do you think of high carb diets long term? Do you think that a higher fiber intake is correlated to better sugar metabolism? So I'll repeat sure. that one more time. What do you think of high carb diets long term? Do you think that a high fiber intake is correlated to better sugar metabolism? And we'll start yeah, with you. In the thousands of people I've coached over the last twenty three years. Putting on a high carb, everybody gets better insulin resistance and they decrease the insulin uh, resistance, they increase the insulin sensitivity. I've reversed type 2 diabetics and they get to live normal, healthy lives. They get to eat as much as they want. This has to be militant about the oil intake, the fat intake, and ideally go vegan off the animals. So that's, that's every time I've seen that. With type 1 diabetics, type 2 diabetics, 
you know, I've, I've just coached so many and had such success with it. And it started in 1999 with a, a cycling friend of mine and, uh, you know, taking me out bike riding and stuff like that. Bike racing, you need know, to have what, the best insulin sensitivity all week after a bike race. And so that's, that started me. So 20 years dealing with sugar metabolic issues uh, in myself as well and, uh, and friends and clients, whatever you want to call them, over the years. So definitely high carb is, is where it's at. You can watch the documentary, What the Health, the new one, Game Changers, you know, Neil Bernard's talking about it. There's a guy on YouTube called Robbie Bavaro. He's a type one diabetic and he talks about his experiences on a high fruit diet. And he's having ma- amazing success with his insulin levels as a, a long-term type one diabetes. So you get to eat real food. Everybody loves pasta, pizza, fruit, rice, sandwiches, burgers. You know, that's real food. Who wants to just eat a piece of dead animal flesh for dinner? It's like, it's, it's psychotic, man. Yeah, everybody loves carbs. And so to deny that, in my opinion, is an eating disorder and it's a deprived life. I know carbs. Like people love, I love, I love crystallized ginger. I love lollies. I love 30 seconds. You know, I love the sweets. So it's crazy, man. That people want to deprive that thinking they're going to get healthier. That, I mean, if you want to do that, then great. But you just fucking the planet up. You're fucking yourself up. You're health wise. So it just, and there's no one out there who's reversing type two diabetes long term with the keto diet. Well, you, I actually you, have a question you, on that. I have a question on that later. So let's let's keep the response to that one minimal. Uh, yeah. Did did you hit up the part about uh, higher fiber intake being better for sugar metabolism, Harley? I'll give you like ten high seconds. Fiber, in my experience, fiber doesn't ma- make a difference in terms of insulin okay. resistance or sensitivity. Fat is okay. the issue always. All right, we'll move into Bart here. Bart, uh, you got two minutes there, bud. Yep. Okay. A high carbohydrate diet is, in my professional opinion, fucking stupid. Um, it will lead to long-term health problems for, for the vast majority of people who undertake that kind of diet at some point uh, sooner or later. Um, there are plenty of people who are reversing type 2 diabetes and other all sorts of problems with uh, low carbohydrate, high fat, moderate protein, and indeed high protein diet so what harley said about that is just basically you know once again something some pseudo fact that he's pulled out of some orifice from somewhere there's there's no support for what he's saying in the literature citing clowns like you know barnard and so and, and even you know naming that ridiculous propaganda piece the game changes as any sort of source of information just really places harley exactly where he is uh, in terms of his ability to interpret anything remotely scientific because that was just a ridiculous ridiculous piece of shit uh, it's been debunked a million times already uh, all over the internet just go and have a look at it for yourselves it's just ridiculous you just keep har- you just keep carving up though harley so that you don't fall over and you know your blood sugar doesn't fall through the floor it's just absolute crazy stuff so yeah just you know everything harley said there wrong all of it completely wrong and that's coming from someone who's actually trained in the area and actually understands what's going on with the with the bio you know biochemistry and everything and the physiology and, and all of that you know this is someone who's actually been there done that cut the bodies open and you know looked inside and seen what's going on so sorry harley just wrong mate wrong you do uh i have seen some of your content bart regarding the um uh, the sugar metabolism based on fiber and you have that issue with that on your channel right so you do agree mm-hmm. on that one thing at least which is that uh fiber doesn't make a difference that's that's yes your stance correct yeah no I, I don't think fiber makes a great difference in that respect no okay cool so just wanted to clarify throw that one out there can i get cool. you guys lined up again i like the other way uh okay anyway uh dan we're gonna move to you and we you got two minutes there you're doing right i said about type 2 diabetes and a ketogenic diet can't reverse it but how comes dr jason fung which is an actual doctor and md has been reversing so many people's type 2 diabetes left right and center it's not based on anecdotal evidence it's based on his research and his findings with so many different people and guess what i was doing the strict 80 10 10 diet that during my dc for a long time it's like the high carb low fat low protein raw vegan diet and after about a year of eating that way i ended up with hyperglycemia i'd eat loads of fruit because he was telling me to do it i was listening to him so much through his videos and I'd eat loads of fruit and I was having loads of fat a lot of them say having too much fat is when I was pretty much eating no fat at all. And when I'd eat, my blood sugar levels would drop, my energy levels would go down. I was getting the, the, the blood sugar levels tested and this just kept being an issue. So then I'd be like, I eat more and it would make it worse and worse and worse. It was exacerbating the issue for me. I'm not saying that that happens to everyone, 
But to be honest, the ketogenic diet, from what I've seen time and time again, it regulates your blood sugar levels because you're not getting loads of glucose and carbohydrates and it's regulating your insulin production as well. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me what doing right is actually saying because there's a lot of things to disprove that from what I've seen. Okay. Anything to add? We're going to move back to Durian um, Rider for the one minute And also, round. when I've been on a ketogenic diet, a carnival diet, my blood sugar levels are stable consistently throughout the day. They don't go up and down. They're not really high. A lot of time when I wake up in the morning, a high-carb diet with low fat, low protein, I will make sure, I'll, I'll say that again, is that my blood sugar levels will still be sky high in the mm. morning as well. So this is an issue for me. So it's like, from what I've seen from testing blood sugar levels with myself, that's, yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily true. Okay. Uh, we will move over to during rider. You've got a minute there to respond, add on whatever you'd like to say there. Uh, first question. I didn't catch how old Bart was. And if Bart, Bart's doing a keto diet, like he claims, Bart, can you just lift up your abs? Everybody, everybody's seen my abs. Everybody's seen Danny's abs. Let's see Bart's abs. Yes, that's, that's Danny. That's the vegan, the vegan body for the last six years. Okay, that's Danny's so, abs, high carb. Bart, so, show us your abs. What, what's show your guess your on my, what's what's your guess on my age? It could be between thirty and fifty. Right. Well, I am between thirty and fifty, mm. and I I show show largely I, yeah. You can have a look for what they're worth. There's, there's nothing exciting to look at there. There's there you go. That's what you okay, see. Okay, so you're fat. Yep. Gotcha. No, I don't no think abs. I'm fat at all, Harley. And in no, fact, no. you look bloat. You're estrogenic, bro. No, don't. Estrogenic. No, that's. What's that's, your estrogen levels? We don't Why have any I, way to uh, validate. Why would or... I measure those? I have, you know, I don't eat so anything. Got no abs. So Danny's got abs from the vegan diet last six years, high carb, low fat vegan. He's got abs. You don't but only because I train to get abs. If you don't train your abs specifically to build the abs, you ain't going to have abs. It's, that's just it. You don't use it, you lose it. No, okay. you've got low body fat, Danny, from high, for six years of high sugar diet. Yeah, okay, I, have so, some, I have a little bit of body fat on, and that's because, actually. Bart doesn't have any abs. Let's, no, let's give Bart his chance here. I, I do have abs. They are occluded by a layer, of, a very small but, layer of fat. And the on. reason, if you would like to shut the fuck up for a minute, Harley. He's, he's muted. Okay, go for it, Bart. The reason... The reason that there is a little bit of fat on my body is because I have been transgressing against the carnivore diet by eating plant material fairly significantly in the last month or so due to a lot of personal distress that's been going on, actually. So, you know, again, you're, you're making assumptions and, and making like you know what's going on. You have absolutely no idea what's going on, Harley. You're an absolute ignorant fucktard who thinks he knows something okay, about okay. something. But in actual fact, what you are is a complete ignoramus. You have no idea what's been going on. There you go. Okay. Okay. Well, Bart's foregoed his last 15. Uh, we will unmute Harley. And I think it's Dan's turn to drop that last minute. Anything you want to say here, Dan, to add on? Uh, just try and keep the language advertiser friendly. <laughs> That's well, all I'm going to say. It's, we're, we're okay for now. We're okay for now. We've been keeping it under control here. Um, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll just... Uh, We'll let another minute flow. You guys can just have the open mic there, get out on this subject, and then we'll move on. Yeah, and it's just the abs thing. Like I said, it's like before I didn't have abs on the fruit-based diet when I had a low body fat percentage. Then once I started training like a beast with abs to actually build up my abs, then they became visible. There's so many skinny fat people that I see on the Royal Tier 4 diet that don't have abs whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Go in the gym and train with me like an absolute beast and you get the abs <laughs> popping like crazy. Like you don't just miraculously gain abs because you have low body fat percentage and eat a Oops. diet that helps you have a low body fat percentage. It's absolutely craziness. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, it is a fact uh, based on Durian Rider's Strava data that he does in fact uh, exercise slash cycle for more than two hours a day, uh, sometimes on average throughout the day, 365 days a year, over 20 miles a day averaged on a bicycle. So, you know, that's just a I little also, moderator I also addition there. No exercise training of any kind, actually. No exercise training. Okay. We're going to move on, guys. Energy. We'll go ahead and can this. plenty of energy, and I don't need move to this. be sitting there stuffing my face to keep my uh, energy up, Harley. All right, my boys, we're going to move on here. Uh, we switched camera angles, so now I'm confused. Who is going to be, I think it was during right or last, so Bart, we're back to you, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, Bart uh, has a statement to make. I don't know how long this round is going to take, but Bart's statement is, would you guys be prepared to take an N15 test? And Bart, feel free to jump in here and help explain this um, mm -hmm. for the rest of the guys. And this was a statement that he wanted to make, or question, I guess. And we'll give you two minutes to tell us what it is and why it's important and... 
Go for it. You got sure, two minutes. Sure. An N15 test is basically an isotope test. It looks at mm. the isotope value of the nitrogen in a sample taken from the tissues. Basically, what it will establish is how much animal material someone has been eating. Okay. And what is the point of this test? Well, someone that claims to have been on a 100% vegan diet for any period of time will come back with an N14, N15 ratio that supports that. Anyone who's been actually stuffing in some animal products, hmm. just quietly, sneakily, their N15 test will show that up too. So that's the question. Would, would you be? I know Dan would be because he's quite happy to say he's been eating meat. So would I. I'd be happy to take one. So really, the question is directed to Harley. Would you take the test, buddy? 100%. That's, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah I, I might that. call you fat, but I might say you've lost your hair from steroids, but I think you've got some valuable things to share, and, and I think you'd be a really interesting guy to talk to. I'd definitely be down for that. Cool. Let's do that. So and you're in, way, you're I in lost public my hair. I lost my hair 20 years ago. How, how old are you? Uh, well, between 30 and 50, as you correctly mm -hmm. said. I'm actually 47, if you must know. 47. For, okay. For what it's worth. Cool. Um, I've never taken steroids in my life, as I said, and I'd be quite happy really? to. Because yeah, your, your neck suggests otherwise. No, well, that, that's only if you're an ignorant buffoon, Harley. Like no, you are. I've got personal experience of taking steroids. I can spot yeah, but, Danny you know, has and you have it as well. It doesn't, it, it doesn't <laughs> mean you understand anything about anything, actually. Personal experience yeah. is, is just what you've seen. What, what are you pointing out? Uh, we're gonna, what are you pointing out on Bart that his, what do you mean his neck? Why do you think that Bart he is on steroids? redding on the neck, which there isn't actually any redding. And he, the room writer says, everyone that's got a red neck here is on steroids. And he's like, so many other things can cause that as well, like high blood yeah. pressure and so on. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, okay. Well, even Bart's. No, I'd say Bart's definitely used gear, and he's got high blood pressure. Okay. Well, you'd be wrong on both counts. Okay. That's just my professional opinion based on. No, it's not your professional opinion. It's your <laughs> ignorant opinion. <laughs> okay. As, as an absolute clown who's not trained in anything, okay, okay. And doesn't know anything right. about anything. And, bro, you're, you're fat. Wrong on both counts. <laughs> you're fat. No, you're wrong on that one too. You have no weight and, in this and, conversation. You're fat. You got no. You're wrong. You're wrong in that one as well, Harley. That's you're that's fat, your, bro. Right. Absolutely everything that comes out of your stupid mouth. You've is got a body wrong. like a, a salami. I swear, hang out to the mouth. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. You're an absolute. Right. You do, bro. If that's all you've got, you might as well turn your mic off now, Harley, because you've got nothing to offer anybody. I'm not fat by any definition provided by anybody. I have never taken steroids whatsoever. You know, you're just talking bullshit. You're just talking out a hole in your ass. You're, yeah, just, it, you're just a clown. If you turn up for a running race, they would say, what are you doing here, mate? Get to the, get to the back. You're fat. Get to the back, bro. If you're okay, well, not everything is about a running race, Harley. Not everybody trains you for that. Get, uh, get okay. You All right, we're moving, we're, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. We're gonna just, we're gonna cut this question. We're moving it right. now to uh, Dan. He's gonna take it first. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. So Dan, uh, I think you gave me the first question, and I've kind of like made other questions that I, I'm gonna start with you. Um, okay. So back in the day, and I'm meaning a couple of years ago, you know, when Raw Till Four was at the top of the charts, the vegan, everybody was under the the, the heavy brainwashing, um, the heyday. Back in the day, it was in vogue to eat a low-salt diet as a vegan. Yeah. Carnivores and keto people seem to think otherwise regarding salt these days. Where do you stand on the issue? And we're going to go around the circle. So Dan first, Durian Rider second, we'll do Bart last. You got two minutes. So there. I switched to the 10 10 diet first for around two years. It was like 95.5, so like 90% carbs from calories. Um, from carbs, 5% fat and protein. And I did that whole no salt thing for around three years. Then I got into a place where it seemed that I was starting to experience hyponatremia. So my sodium levels are so low and I started to feel absolutely awful. And I was training a lot. I'm in Thailand, so I'm sweating a lot. And I found that I felt drawn to start looking into some information around this. Started experimenting with unrefined sea salt, not this refined sea salt that is just pure sodium chloride. It's garbage. And I found that it started to resolve the issue that I had going on. And from my own personal experience, I don't need some science to tell me that it's good for me or not. I tried it. I looked into certain people that actually know what they're talking about with this type of thing, like Dr. Brownstein, who has a book on using salt for healing. And it started making me feel amazing. So, yeah. A lot of people in the royalty four diet, well, they, what the royalty four diet says you must have a low amount of salt, which I think that's a load of garbage, especially if you're training a lot and sweating a lot, which they recommend to work out a lot, especially with cycling. So, yeah, from my own post experience and what I've seen, 
I don't think it's a good idea whatsoever. But if it's refined salt, then it is definitely really bad for you, without a doubt. Okay, so what kind of salt do you take? We got 30 seconds to go. Uh, I just take unrefined Celtic sea salt. I think it's one of the best ones out there and one of the most uh, nutrient-dense. It has naturally occurring minerals found within it. Okay, uh, so we'll pass it along to Durian Ryder. Do you need me to repeat the question, or are you ready to rock? Just ask the question again. Okay, so back by the blue zones. Back in the day, it was in vogue to eat a low-salt diet as a vegan. Carnivore and keto people seem to think otherwise regarding salt these days. Where do you stand on the issue? I, I'm a fan of salt. I've done a period, hmm. was it, oh, I'd have to double-check the dates, maybe three to four years of no salts and no seaweed, etc. I found my performance was okay, but with added salt, increase in performance. I'm a fan of salt. Any type of salt, the Celtic sea salt, Himalayan salt, Morton's iodized salt, they'll all work at increasing blood pressure. Uh, in someone who's got low blood pressure from maybe not enough salt or not enough sleep, water, sugar, or potassium. So I'm a fan of salt. How much salt? Between one to four grams a day. If you're doing extreme stuff and you need more salt, then have more salt. But make sure you have enough water and carbohydrate. And if you're going to use any stimulants like caffeine, etc., don't use those on hot days because that can really throw out your, uh, your sodium and potassium levels. So uh, you, we've got a minute left with you, so I'm going to follow up with that. You said back in the day, I, I remember about uh, taking in less than 1,000 milligrams a day, right? So that'd be one gram. So what, raw. Yeah. what What changed and why Why was it specific to that when you're raw? Like, what does that have to do with it? And what, and what made you change that opinion? What made me change is I got back into high-performance fitness cycling, hmm. and I just did, did some experiments. As well. I'll try eating some oats. I'll try eating some rice, trying some potatoes, trying some potatoes with ketchup. And just noticed my blood pressure was better uh, when I was doing high intensity intervals on the bike. And did you test it? So did you test your blood pressure, blood pressure while you're riding? Uh, we can just feel it in your legs. Okay. Feel it in your legs. You can feel it in the power. I was using a power meter at the time. And so the power is going up, which means there's more pressure on the legs, more pressure in the blood. So if you have low blood pressure, you can't push what's hmm. what you normally could. So I did that. Uh, so yeah. Also, a question would be well, maybe we can talk about the blue zones. Jason Fonger just mentioned the blue zones. And that's a great example as well. I think Bart thinks the blue zones don't exist. But yeah, it'd be interesting to hear about that. We'll, we'll maybe touch on that uh, after we rock the next couple of questions. Uh, maybe I'll give you a, a pass on one of the questions I've created for you and you can use that as an elective or something. Uh, so we'll pass this along to Bart. And Bart, you've got your two minutes. Uh, low salt diets, completely contraindicated, really bad idea. Salt is a very, very good thing. Personally, I use quite a lot of Himalayan pink salt and also... Himalayan black salt. Keep those carbs up, Durian, while you're at it there. Make sure in between every single answer you keep those carbs up so your brain doesn't stop working. Um, yep, sugar's a great, uh, not sugar, sugar's not a great thing. Sugar's a really bad thing. Um, <laughs> salt's a really good thing. Salt's great. Yep. Do you yeah, have any, some second. do you have any like amount that you shoot for or, you know, do you have any idea how much you're ta no, no, taking? No, I, I, I take in salt, um, ad libitum. I add salt to all the meat when, when I eat my meat. Um, also, you know, I take in some snake juice here and there when I can stomach the stuff. Okay. Frankly. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I would, I would take in a lot more salt than most people. Okay. Um, what about, I know I thought that was interesting and maybe Dan, when we get back around to you as well, but, Bart, for now, do you think that's anything to that? As far as Dream Rider says, you can feel the difference in power. Is that is that an athletic thing? Do you know anything about that? Well, I mean, obviously, muscle contractions are are powered by by nerve impulses, which are entirely caused by the changes of ions across the cell membranes of the muscle cells, and those ions that we're talking about are all salt. They're all salts. So, if you're short on so salts, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. If you're short on salts, your ability to produce muscle force will go down. No two ways about it. Yeah. Okay. Dan, we'll shift over to you. We'll follow it up with another minute. Do you yeah, have anything well, else you want to say? Durian Rider seems to have quite a good view on it. He doesn't seem to be promoting it in a way he used to of being like, what was it, under 500 milligrams a day? I think it was the raw to full diet, like really, really. Yeah, I think low. it was shooting under so, 1,000 milligram. Yeah. Um, and he was saying it could help with low blood pressure, but Dr. Brownstein found that a lot of people, once they switched to just unrefined sea salt, that it was bringing their high blood pressure down. A lot of people think that salt brings your blood pressure up, which refined salt could possibly do it, but there's a lot of other contributing factors that do in that as well. But I see it as a very, very healthy thing that I think everyone should be in almost 
hardly anyone is consuming unrefined sea salt and so much refined sea salt, which is stripped of all the beneficial other things that you actually need for the salt to be as healthy for you as possible. Okay. Uh, Harley, would you like to follow up with a minute? Yeah. Okay. Well, I would say that you know, as a person who's the fittest in this chat and fittest by far, I would say that, yeah, high carb, low fat, reasonable amount of so enough sodium is, is definitely critical. There's no athlete out there who's performing at a strong, decent level on a, on a high fat, low carb keto diet. This is that is simply possible. untrue again, Harley. That is just <laughs> not correct. Name one name. Name one fast runner or this cyclist who does keto. Okay. My, the first Spot. two of my advanced research degrees are all exercise physiology. I am acquainted with the trainers of some very, very big names who are not only performing well but kicking ass. Obviously, confidentiality doesn't let me name names because I'll tell you what, they do not want their competitors knowing that's what they are doing. And you can make any sort of hand gesture you like, Harley. It doesn't change the facts. If you like privately, you and I can have an email discussion. I will give you the names of some exercise physiologists you can contact personally. That might be a bad who idea. may or may not be able to disclose some information to you. But what I can tell you for a fact, for someone who is involved in the Bart, industry, we're in your time now. We're in your time now, Bart. Basically, uh, but just hold what it, you're hold saying it. there about nobody performing at a high level on a low carb, high fat diet is completely false. I have one. Take, take it I or have leave one. it. I you have can one. Go if you like, Dan. Go. Yeah, Zach Bitter is an ultra runner, holds the world record for the most miles run in a 12 hour period, which is 101 <laughs> miles. And he set that in 2015. So that is bull crap. You need the complete full ketogenic diet. You're talking out your ass. Like, seriously. So Harley, I know you're going to want to respond to that. Yeah, Zach is smashing in refined sugar on the live stream of his races. He's sponsored by a company that's called Five Carb or Carb Five or whatever. It's corn, maltodextrin, sucrose, glucose, fructose. It's like it's, he's smashing in refined sugar. You can't use yeah. Zach Bitter as an example of a keto athlete when he's guzzling sugar. That's like me eating steak on camera and people saying Harley's a vegan athlete. No, no, no. You're keto or you're carb. You can't be like, I'm keto now and I'm going to carb off in the race. That's not how it works. That's absolute bullshit, man. That's, we'll that's let this run for yeah. another 45 that's seconds, that's guys. Like using, that's like using a bicycle in a marathon. I can run a two-hour marathon, but he's a What bicycle. is this clicking sound going on? Anybody got Crazy. a mic that's clicking or something? Crazy. Zach Bitter is not keto low carb. Look in the races, look at the live stream. He's smashing the sugar in. He even admits it. I've talked to him on Instagram. Well, if you actually look in an interview, someone did an interview with him on the manual.com and they actually talked to him and he talks in the interview that he had zero carbs whatsoever. So I haven't actually seen any evidence to actually... Look at, look at the live stream. Ask him directly. Look at this, Look at who he's sponsored by. Look at his sponsors use him in the photos for their energy drink, the sugar energy drink. Like I said, it's impossible to be a decent athlete in ketosis. It's impossible. It doesn't matter how much drugs you use. It is not impossible. It is not impossible Prove it. at all. Prove it, Bart. Well, let's, why don't we listen Prove to the it, person Fanny. who actually knows something about exercise physiology. I have two advanced research degrees, and I am in contact personally with a lot of people who are very high up in the exercise physiology Which world. Uh, again, that's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here, and I disagree entirely, okay. actually, as I've <clears> already <throat> said. What I'm telling you for a fact, for someone who actually is a scientist who works in this area and has worked in this area professionally, academically for more than 20 years, you are talking crap, Harley. It is not only possible, it, it happens, it happens regularly. There are high-level athletes who I could name, but I won't name because of confidentiality, who are kicking ass on low-carbohydrate, high-fat diets. Take right. it or leave it. I don't give a shit whether you believe me or not, Harley. These are the facts. All right, I let's know, move I on here. Flat. Harley, you're going to be the next one up, so you're going to get your you're going to get your mic time. Uh, so this is another question that I proposed that I created for Harley. Uh, should diabetics look into a high sugar diet for optimal health? So the question is: Should diabetics look into a high sugar diet for optimal health? And Harley, we're going to start with you. We're going to move to Bart and then Dan. So Harley, you've got your two minutes. 100%. All, all the all the real-life examples out there. Watch the documentary, What the Health, talk with McDougal. Mm. He's experienced real doctors, not just university lecturers, actually, people who are in as G general practitioners, Neil Bernard, you know, McDougal, 
Esselstein as a, a cardiac surgeon, etc. Uh, you know, helping people reverse type two diabetes and manage their type one much better. You just, just Google up a guy, Robbie Barbaro. He's on social media. He's very transparent with his diet. He's doing high sugar, super low fat, long term high carb vegan fruitarian base. So, hundred percent, you have to do it if you want quality of life. You could probably manage your sugar levels in a ketosis situation, but it'd be very dangerous on the road. You wouldn't be able to focus properly in your car. You have no athletic performance at all. And it would it just, yeah, you, you miss ketoacidosis, all the amino acids in the meat, you'd stink. And no one's talking about the environmental issues of eating meat. You know? it, it's, just, it's just total stupidity. But if people want a salami, salami body, then listen to Bart for sure. Okay, let's keep the personal jabs down here, boys. All right. <laughs> Uh, you've still got another 50 so, yeah. seconds there. It, you've got to carb up. I mean, fat paralyzes insulin. Fat paralyzes insulin. Anybody can feel what insulin, insulin resistance feels like. You're spacey, you're foggy. Go and eat some coconut oil or eat too much fat, be it your, your meat or whatever you're eating or your plant fats, whatever. You, you build insulin resistance very, very quickly. And that leads to some hyperglycemia, some hyperglycemia. And that's why I'm always super lean because my diet is relatively low fat for the you know, last 18 years. So my fasting insulin level is very, very low. Hence why I stay Tour de France level lean all year long. And for most people, I'm too lean. If I never did anabolic steroids, I'd probably be like 60 kilos right now. I'm probably about 70, 72. So if I never ever touched anabolic steroids, I'd, I'd be about 12, 30 kilos lighter. So the whole notion that fat, uh, fatness is caused by carbs is total BS because we have 5 billion people on the planet who are lean and who eat white rice, sugar, corn, et cetera, three or four times a day. Okay. We're going to so, move on to Bart here. Nonsense. Okie dokie. So there we had a tirade uh, free of facts, completely free of facts. Not one single comment that Harley has just made is remotely supportable with any kind of evidence whatsoever. Everything he said is 180 degrees out of phase with reality. Just wrong, 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 and wrong again. What he's just said is a person who is suffering a disease, which means that they are unable to metabolize carbohydrates, should eat a diet which is high in carbohydrates. That is not only wrong, it is fucking stupid. It is brain dead beyond belief. It is, it is stunning that he would cite charlatans like the vegan MDs that he mentioned there, every single one of them is ideologically driven and not health driven. That has been shown time and time again on my very fine channel, actually, if you want to go and look at some actual science done by an actual scientist, a scientist, by the way, who has trained more medical doctors than Harley has had hot feeds, actually. So, you know, his jabs at me, his jabs at my dad, Bob, because I'm 47 years old and I've been eating very poorly for the last two months, uh, uh, do not gain any traction. They do not change the scientific facts. It's just craziness that, that people like Harley will, will come online, stuff his face full of carbs while he's at it because he can't keep his, his blood sugar up any other way. And, you know, this, 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 is, this is diabetes waiting to happen. At some point in his life, Harley will have to give up exercising. And what will then happen is his health will deteriorate precipitously. That's my prediction, because that's what happens to all of these athletes that do this kind of thing. So, you know, if you want to listen to this completely untrained buffoon who thinks he knows about biochemistry, Go ahead. It's, it's your lookout. I couldn't give a rip what people want to yeah. believe, but just be, you know, be clear in your mind that what you're taking advice from here is a guy that's telling you that the cure to a disease caused by eating carbohydrates is to eat more of the fucking things, you know, crazy. Okay. And his statement there around uh, um, fat causing insulin resistance or sluggish in any way, shape or form. Nonsense, Harley. Absolute <clears throat> nonsense. There is we'll no science to, uh... behind that either. Move on to Dan here. Dan, what, uh, would you like me to repeat the question or are you good to go? Uh, well, yeah, Bart K was just saying that Duran Rise said that fat causes insulin resistance. But if you're consuming a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of fat, like most people are on a diet, then that is definitely a deadly combination without a doubt. But get rid of carbs and have loads of fat, you're not going to have issues with insulin like resistance or anything like that. Or as Dr. Jason Fung, as I mentioned him earlier on, He's getting people off of their medication that have type 2 diabetes 
and it seems to be working. It's like if you've got issues with insulin and your blood sugar levels are going up and down, why would you eat more of the foods, which are the carbohydrates that mess with that even more? Why not just remove them and keep eating the fats and keep it super low carb with a good amount of protein? So then insulin sensitivity is optimal and you're not insulin resistance whatsoever and your blood sugar levels won't skyrocket at any point. It's just like, it just makes complete sense to me. And that's what I've seen. Like when I've done like so many different tests with myself with testing my blood sugar levels, a ketogenic diet, I stay in ketosis almost all day long. My blood sugar levels are a low range, but not an a, a extremely unhealthy low range, but uh, like an optimal range to feel the best. But then when I eat loads of carbohydrates and I don't eat any fat whatsoever, my blood sugar levels are almost triple hmm. the, the, the amount that it is when I'm on a, a ketogenic diet in comparison to it. So yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me okay. why you would eat loads of carbs to cure diabetes. Okay, I also well, just wonder how much training and nutrition Harley thinks MDs get as part of their training as an MD. Having trained many, many MDs, I can tell you the answer, but I'd like to hear what he thinks. Harley, Less you've got a minute. Weeks. <laughs> you've got a minute, Harley. What's, to, to... What's the question? From who? It's the same same question. Should diabetics, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, should diabetics look into sugars op for optimal health? You're just just the last minute here. We're going to go around it again and right. give you guys each a minute. If I was a type, type two diabetic, I had a body like salami man. I would eat high carb, low fat, be militant on the fat intake get lean, get shredded, eat pasta, pizza, rice, fruit, smoothies, juices, sugar, candy, ginger, popcorn. I'd have all the beautiful carbohydrate <laughs> foods. Jesus. As much as I want. And just get incredible insulin sensitivity, have good test, uh, penile function. I just had sex before. We got in the live stream. Really? Rock hard girth. And, you know, rock it's hard. Like, okay. Rock hard girth, better blood flow. Watch the Can Natasha stages. give us a thumbs up on that to verify or... Natasha, give thumbs up, and she's outside the moment. But, okay, uh, yeah, I don't like, I just, I, I love having carbs in my system, mm. and and if you're type two diabetic, if you want my results, then follow my results. If you want Bart's results, follow Bart's results. It's, it's your life, it's your choice. And some people want to look like Bart, some people want to look like me. There's no right or wrong. You do what you want to do. If you want lean, mm. you want abs, you want you know have a hot girlfriend, have energy, smash marathons, take no prisoners, not run on caffeine. Then okay. this is my program works. Okay, Bart, we got your uh, your minute. You're for, you're ready to go. Yeah. So there we go. Once again, um, completely lacking in any form of science factuality. In fact, just a, an ad hominem attack. Um, actually, you know, I I do have you know a good number of clients. They have great results. Actually, as I've said, you know, a number of times, uh, my results are what they are. Currently, they're not where they have been. And that's because of carbohydrate intake, not because of fat intake. Actual fact, it's more likely to do with being a mixture between the two. As per the Randall cycle, which I suggested Harley should probably look up earlier if he wants to know something about actually why it is that his his ideas are going to lead him to serious health problems at some point. Uh, obviously, you know, time will be the will, will be the proof proof over that one. Yeah, you know, people again when you're making decisions about who you want to listen to you should make those decisions on the basis of what the scientific underpinnings are of what those people are saying and what and you know where they've come from in terms of their their scientific background and and i put my cv up against harley's any day of the week because he doesn't have one at all okay. no cv in this area whatsoever he's an absolute buffoon and he's just talking absolute nonsense uh mm -hmm. in order to promote himself and you know we all understand why people do these kind of things but actually everything that comes out of his mouth is strictly fact free and logic okay. free actually well he says he does live in a reality basis he says he likes to uh base things on his experience and results i'm not sure it's it's you know it's actually kind of a viewpoint that i take is a little bit tough to argue with sometimes um, that's why people sometimes struggle arguing with me but uh dan let's move on to you you got your minute there well, if you'd like to add anything, well, it's that one is like refined processed white sugar. I know right. during one and love this stuff. It's been shown that it will deplete B12. That's why so many of these vegans need to take B12 shots on a regular basis. It messes up your gut microbiome. It makes you get quite angry and aggy, which so many of these vegans like freely and doing right. seem to be so aggressive and so angry. It makes your mood all over the show. 
is messing up your blood sugar levels, messing your gut microbiome. It's like, it's like, it's a refined processed garbage food. It's not even a food. It's just like, why is anyone consuming that? No one. Well, anyone that's saying that it's good for you is just, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Like so many issues are caused in people with their health due to an excessive amount of white sugar and just any amount of white sugar. It's just not meant for us. It's not designed by nature at all. It's like, come on, man. I can understand maybe if he's saying some fruits, maybe some people get on with them well, for sure. But white sugar, like, come on, candy and all these other things, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, if you guys have anything to add, do it now. We'll give it about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, I actually wanted to ask Harley, how much fat is in these uh, bags of chips and popcorn that you're eating? Um, this, this popcorn's got about 25 grams of fat in it. Oh, it's actually kind of a high fat popcorn. Not a low fat yeah, popcorn? I'm, I'm trying to bulk up a little bit. You're summer. trying to bulk up? Okay, clean. Okay. Summer bulk. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, if nobody else has anything, we'll just move on. We've got... Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to mention the, the several consultancies I've been involved in that were multi-million dollar consultancies whereby the questions were around exercise regimes and, and dietary regimes and things for a number of very high profile organizations. You know, uh, I just wonder how many times Harley's been involved in any way, shape or form in any kind of consultancy that was paid several million dollars for, for example, the New Zealand All Blacks, the NRL over there in Sydney, um, and both the Australian Defence Force and the New Zealand Defence Forces. I, I just wonder if he's ever been paid to be a part of multi-million dollar consultancies to give answers about how these people should prepare and uh, and also what they should eat and what they shouldn't eat. It seems he wants to tell me I don't know anything about it. I just wonder what he would back that up with. Harley, real quick, and then we're going to yeah, move on. Well my qualifications is my fitness and physique, but you might have so university none, basically, qualifications. Harley, is what you're saying. You, Absolutely you, you no have no qualifications, bro. Look at your fitness, look at your body. That's the results you get for people. You might be a better academic than me, for sure. I'll give you that. You study well, but you can't even get yourself fit. So, so why was I involved in consultancies that got paid multi-millions of dollars? You have no, a because I gave them the answer that they you're got fat. from the results. You have no fitness. End of story, man. You That's have got a degree. nothing to That's do with anything. Harley, you do... You do agree that there's coaches that uh, are, weren't great players, let's say, but they're coaches of amazing teams, right? Like oh, th yeah. this is this is something that happens throughout all sports. Like you don't have to be that fitness level to coach a top level elite player, right? So agree, um, but Bart's giving nutritional advice. But he can't even get results for himself. Okay, that's this that's is, another is, false statement from Harley. The I do abs, not. Bro? I do not give nutritional advice. Okay. okay. Don't slander me, Harley. I do not give, give nutrition. nutrition. I don't give nutritional advice. Good, I've said that you, four you times. You don't have any results, bro. You have no results for yourself. So when it comes to food, shut it up. No, buddy. You okay. are an uneducated buffoon with no qualifications <laughs> and no okay. business to be giving any kind of advice to anybody. You're a clown. All right, we're moving on to you. We're moving on to you. So uh, get ready. Uh, Bart. Yep presented this one to me what supplements are you taking so what supplements are you guys taking bart you got two minutes it's gonna be a quick one i'm guessing yep i don't take any nutritional supplements i do take one supplement that's not nutritional it is a supplement that encourages the release of adult stem cells from my bone marrow to my blood that's the only supplement of any kind what that is I that take. called what's that what is it called? I'd like to know what that is. I'll, I'll talk to you offline about that one, Dan, and I'll give you the details of all that. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Uh, got anything else, Spark? Or... That's it. Okay. Uh, Dan, we're going to move on to you. Uh, any well, other supplements? Do... Yeah, I've just been doing the carnival-based diet for around 33 days, and I wanted to see what it's like without supplements. Would I use some supplements in the future? I might use some vitamin K2 because I can't necessarily get grass-fed butter and other things that I need to get an adequate amount of K2. If I felt I needed any other supplements because running low on anything on this diet, then I would take it. Um, I am going to start experimenting with high doses of EPA and DHA from official supplements. I feel drawn to do so. I just want to do a little experimentation with it. I might get on with it well, I might not. So at the moment, no, I'm not using any supplements, but in the near future, there's and in the recent past, you were you were using a lot of supplements. Oh, correct? I was a supplementarian. I was a supplement king because I ran into so many nutritional deficiencies on this malnourishing, deteriorating diet like crazy, even with eating loads and loads and loads of calories time and time again. And even when I was on a fruit-based diet and eating up to 50 bananas a day for around 5,000 calories, I ran into so many micronutrient deficiencies like crazy, iodine, chromium, 
vanadium, selenium, and so on, which messed up my health like crazy. A common, I uh, a common, you know, criticism of people saying that they're deficient. You know, were you tested for this stuff? Um, how did you know you were deficient in these things? Yeah, quite a few of them I was tested for. Not all of them, but quite a few of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Harley, we're gonna move on to you then, Dan. If you're done. Yeah. Harley. What supplements do I take? Uh, yep. I take vitamin B12, which I've taken even when I was a meat eater back in the day. I take that for hemoglobin support, cyclist running. But I, I rarely take it these days because my hemoglobin's pretty high as it is. So it's, that's the only supplement I take. Sometimes I've experimented with creatine. Being a personal trainer over the last 23 years, I've experimented with a lot of things from anabolic steroids to all sorts of food supplements, different types of diet. I've done the keto diet before. I'm a, I'm a huge, huge believer in personal experimentation if there's minimal risk. And so, yeah, yeah, that answers your question. Minimal risk for anabolic steroids, is it, Harley? Good. For sure. For sure. You fucking idiot. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. All, all as NRL trainers, all as NRL players you train, you think they're on, they're not on steroids? I didn't say I trained the players, Harley. I said I was involved with the NRL. I was actually dealing with the referees. So please stop oh, the making... Referees. St- <laughs> what, please what the referees? Please stop making... They're fitness. they got to be fit too, you fucking idiot, don't you're, they? You're not even fit, bro. You can't even run a 30-minute 5K. <laughs> Again, completely irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. Fitness, what I bro. personally fitness. am capable of. Completely <laughs> irrelevant. You can't even get yourself in shape. How can you give I can, advice, and bro? I have done multiple times in my life, actually. Show us the results. Show us the proof of that, man. What do you want proof of? And what does my results in fitness have anything to do with my credentials to advise people on the best way of doing that? Absolutely you're like a, nothing. You're like a beggar on the street trying to give people financial advice because you went to university. Bro, you can't even uh, get yourself in shape. Wow, you really are a fucktard, aren't you? You really are Stop. severely mentally retarded. I'll give you credit for being on the I feel sorry for you, Harley. You I really feel here. sorry for you because you really are a mental midget. Is your IQ even in double fidget, uh, figures? Figures? I, I, I don't know, but I, I do give you... No, I don't um, think your IQ is even in du- double digits. I, I, and you know, here comes the real steak. But just look at the texture problem. of this thing. <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Dan, we're gonna ask Tanya, Tanya Pura in Paquette. They have a lot of the Olympic swimming teams that go there. And guess what? All the coaches are all overweight. They're just coaches. They used to be fit when they used to train all of the time. So yeah, it doesn't this doesn't make them a bad coach whatsoever. They may not have the results then, but they had it before. They know what to do, and they just don't want to do all that type of training in excessive amounts to keep them really lean because that isn't their goals in life anymore. So your position is just train and that's what's going to get the results. If you don't train, it doesn't have anything to do with your knowledge on the subject, basically. Yeah, exactly that. It's like if you're just eating food and quite a bit of food and not working out, anyone is pretty much going to get fat in most situations with it, especially if it's a calorie surplus. So, yeah. Okay. That's why uh, triathletes burn out because they don't know how to train properly. <clears throat> well, yeah, if there's anything sure. left, we're going to give it a minute and then we're going to move on to the, uh, the next question, which will be Dan heading that up. You guys got anything else to say on this? topic subject let's keep it try, try and keep it clean the, the all the all the tour de france winners this year going on the vegan high carb wagon i get i get dms on my instagram from professional cyclists and runners and triathletes asking me for advice they well send me a message saying harley i follow your high carb adding sugar to my smoothies more now the you know, results are through the roof thanks a lot blah 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 so i got a lot every for every single one of them look, but every single one that was going to a festival they're all around 20 years old they're all like children straight out of school it's like I don't no, see a lot of I'm, older I'm, I'm talking professional athletes here, like Olympic medal uh, triathletes, Tour de France riders, et cetera, who are following my program, carbon up. Let, and, let's uh, have a look at the prevalence yeah. of type 2 diabetes and sequelae, other complications around that after professional athletes retire, Harley, shall we? It all depends what, if they follow your diet, you look like, yeah, you know, you've got a lot of fat in your blood. Judging Again, your belly talking fat. about me is, does not answer the question. Fat. Talking about me does not answer the question I've just posed. I said, shall we look you at? Child for your shall I? Shall, shall we look at the results that happens to professional athletes at large? Not oh. me. Professional athletes at large when they retire from being a professional athlete. What is their incidence rate of type two diabetes, <sighs> etc., as compared to the normal population? It's through the fucking roof yeah, right. because the diet they've been undertaking as an athlete. They are able to tolerate as an athlete because they are burning off most of that energy by, as you say, yeah. training inappropriately, i.e. too much. And as soon as they stop doing that activity, it's the only thing that's keeping them alive. 
their health falls to bits and they drop dead within the next 10 years, having first got usually obese beforehand. Those All are right, quick, quick response from Harley, those. then we're going to move on. Or you can take another shot at me, if you like, Harley, which will make absolutely no fucking difference to the facts. All right, Harley, That's what do you got to say? I agree. I agree. That's, that is very true because a lot of athletes out there are doing the carbs are bad, you know, protein's good, have a bit of carbs in a race day, not too much. So they have this eating disorder habit. And then when they retire, they're just like, fuck it, just give me an effort. And they're eating so much fat and protein, they just, they just get fat. That's why Bart has to calorie restrict to stay lean. And he's like a little piece of meat a day and he's still got dad bod. So Bart uh, does not calorie restrict at all, Harley. Yeah, Bart does not Again, okay. you're just well, talking maybe, absolute maybe you should, fucking bro. nonsense. Maybe you should. Bart does not calorie That's- restrict. Harley is now should. promoting calorie restriction. Okay, Dan, real quick, yeah. we got him. You're gonna have the you're gonna have the floor here in two minutes. So for two minutes. Uh, what what is the question now? Well, okay, so let's just can that one, Dan. Uh, this is a okay. question that I propose for you. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit long, so guys, bear bear with me here. Okay, plant toxins and anti nutrients are a heavily debated topic in the health food community. Vegans argue that humans are adapted to eat a huge variety of plant foods for optimal health. And the carnivore crowd essentially takes the opposite stance. Where do you stand on the topic? I'll read it again. Plant toxins okay. and anti-nutrients are a heavily debated topic in the health food community. Vegans argue that humans are adapted to eat a wide variety of plant foods for optimal health. And the carnivore crowd essentially takes the opposite stance. Where do you stand on the topic? Dan, we'll start with you. Uh, you could say that I'm sort of middle ground at the moment. I think that we should not be eating grains, beans, seeds, and legumes without a doubt. I think that, like, for example, me, I eat mostly meat at the moment of fish. And the rest of the food that I eat, which is earlier in the day, is local, organic, in-season fruit. I don't seem to run into any digestive issues from it. If it starts making me feel like crap, I stop eating it. I go on how I feel. And I think normally fruits, when they're not, like, massively hybridized, for example, when they're, like, heirloom fruits, I think they are way more designed to feel good from them. Um, but I found, for me, I just run into so many digestive issues with all of these plant foods. And the, the anti nutrients so many people run into so many health issues due to oxalates and then phytic acid, which binds to so many of, binds to the minerals in the food. So so many people say, for example, consume pumpkin seeds on a vegan diet to get zinc. Well, the phytates bind to it, you don't absorb it. And then it affects your assimilation of other nutrients as well. And you have so many other anti-nutrients that made so many people long-term just deteriorate on a vegan diet and be- end up becoming so malnourished because they're not getting all the nutrients they need. Their digestion is compromised, their assimilation and elimination. And they run into so many nutritional deficiencies and other issues, which when they start eating animal foods like meats that don't have all these anti-nutrients in and all the nutrients that they've been lacking for so long, boom, all of a sudden their digestive issues and all their other issues start to go away just like it did for me when I made the switch. Okay. Uh, Durian Ryder, would you like to jump onto that one? You've got your two minutes. Question being, which part do you want me to address? <clears throat> uh, the whole the thing. So, yeah, so do you? where do you fall uh, on you know whether or not plant toxins and anti-nutrients are a serious health you know, is it, is it debated? Is it something that we should watch out for? Or do you no, have they, any opinion? They definitely are. Yeah. I think they're definitely, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in plants we shouldn't eat. Or if we are going to eat them like caffeine, do it in very, very minimal proportions. Very, very rarely, if, if at all, I would say caffeine would be the worst one as plant alkaloids, neurotoxin, you know, all the keto people love it. The carnival people love it. Some even vegans, some love it. It's just, if you're not getting enough carbohydrates, sleep, water, or sugar, you're going to eat more caffeine. So if you're going to have caffeine, have it very, very rarely because it causes an acid in the gut, SIBO type symptoms. So caffeine would be the worst of the plant alkaloids, the plant toxins, whatever you want to call it, the anti-nutrients. So keep be careful with caffeine. Uh, raw greens, sometimes like kale. I think it's very, very tough. A lot of people digest. I think if you're going to have kale, best to cook it, cook it well. Uh, otherwise, you know, your raw greens like celery, lettuce are fantastic. Just light on the digestion. Your fruits go easy on the nuts. Uh, unless you're trying to gain some fat, nuts are a good source of fat. Otherwise, yeah, no, no issues there. Unless you're eating like raw potatoes, make sure you cook them. So yeah, cook your starches, eat your fruit raw, cook some what greens. What about the phytates that make so many people run into mineral issues? I've never met anyone who's got a mineral mineral deficiency that can show me on paper or real life because of phytates or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of quacks in the health food world who have like right, gallstones and or, kidney stones and stuff like that. Where do you think that comes yeah. from? Are often from too much fat or oxalates. smashing and smashing and way more oxalates than they could handle. Like just mm. drinking gallons of green juice. I mean, your body has its natural switch for greens. Like if you're juicing it with apple, you mask that switch. So 
you're going to have your greens, have them alone. You know, things like kale and spinach, like cook them up. And then your body will just tell you what's enough. But if you're juicing them with apples and sweet and it tastes good, you're just clogging them back. And you see people doing these green juice fasts. And it's like, there's no way you'd eat that much greens in nature. You wouldn't, you'd, you'd be like, oh, it's just bitter. They just hold their nose and drinking it down for green juice, chlorophyll benefits or whatever. And that can fuck up your, your kidneys and liver in some people with oxalate issues. All right. Uh, Bart, you got your two minutes there. Yeah, basically, it's a very interesting area. There are a lot of these things that, that clearly do exist. Unfortunately, what is lacking is any empirical science, any well-designed, well-controlled, random order crossover trials to show cause and effect mechanistically in human beings. That's where the work needs to go. Unfortunately, the ethics don't really allow us to go there so much. Therefore, we are relying a little bit on anecdotes. And the anecdotes are, if you remove plants from your diet, your digestion tends to improve. We have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are reporting the same. So um, for me, that's, that's okay. I'll accept that. Um, I'm one of those people that does way, way better when I don't consume any plant matter at all. As soon as I consume any significant amount of plant matter whatsoever, I get fat like I am right now, according to Harley. So when I have been on a strict carnivore diet for a period of months, uh, then we can do the at the abs shot again for Harley since he's since he likes that sort of thing. And it's and it's kind of erotic for him to look at other men's body parts. And certainly we can put that together for him in due course. But that's that's basically what happens. I get bloated, my digestion falls to bits, I become very, very unwell physically and mentally if I consume any amount of plant matter of any kind. And many, many others are reporting the same. Basically, the difference between one individual and another is their ability to cope with or to sustain um, even apparent health against the challenge of plants that's what varies between people not not whether or not plants are toxic to me in my mind there's no question okay there you go all right so dan we're going to move on to you you've got your minute if you'd like to follow up with anything there yeah what i'd say is there's just a lot of people that seem to run into digestive issues on a plant-based diet and there's so many people once they go like strict carnivore they seem to start resolving those issues and i've seen this time and time again with so many different people that have run into issues on a whole food plant-based vegan diet to be more specific, not just some um, any type of vegan diet because it could be absolute garbage that you're consuming. And yeah, it's like Tim Sheaf, Ravana, like raw alignment, all these people, including myself, so many of them run into digestive issues. We start in the animal foods and these issues go away like rapidly because the I mean, water fast. Well, well, a lot of them don't as well. Like so many of my, most of my family Tim, members. Have been the examples there. you use, they did water fast. Tim, Ravana, they, they, water fasting kills your digestion then. Well, they're just a few examples. Like my whole family are vegan and now most of them are not vegan and none of them, almost none of them have done fasting or any sort of detoxification or anything and run into issues. So they were just some examples. I could make a whole list of hundreds of different. If, if, they, if you coach them, Danny, sorry to interrupt. You got a minute there, if, if they, Harley. Yeah, if, with Danny, it. you... You were drinking turpentine just you know, a while back. And so if your family and friends have digestive issues vegan, they're probably drinking turpentine because they're following your advice. Turpentine, bro, that's toxic as heck. Drinking turpentine and wondering why you have gut issues or doing a water fast and then trying to eat food again and wondering why your gut's playing up. That's just dumb. That's just like me headbutting a brick wall and wondering why I've got a headache and blaming a vegan diet. Like, well, I wasn't coaching my family man. members, to be honest, and not even the same country as me. I could Skype them, but they never asked for my health. They actually work with someone that is a certified nutritionist, and they follow all of her advice. And she does live blood analysis with them, and everything. They don't get advice from me. So it's probably like a low carb vegan diet, lots of nuts, cashews, and stuff like that. No, nah, not at all. They followed the rule till four, the majority of them. <laughs> well, they weren't working. With, they weren't working with me. So there's no nutritionist out there who'd be following. Yeah, like I doubt it, man. Anyway, it's that's the usual that. Harley Johnson school of if you don't know the answer to something, make some shit up and assume you know the answer, and, and then say it with authority yeah. as if it's a fact. Yeah. Absolute fucking nonsense, Harley. You're just <laughs> talking through a hole in your ass as usual, and, and, and saying and board. saying that saying that you know fasting kills your metabolism. Well, to use a line that you like to throw around a lot, prove it, son. 
Well, prove it. All those people who gain weight. Look at no, 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 no. Prove it. Show us, show us some evidence that Tim supports like your claim. like ten body fat, full six pack, like super ripped athlete. I don't know. I don't understand. Show us how he's... a single shred of scientific evidence that says fasting of any kind kills your digestion, or is that well, just one, one of your Harley Johnson make the fat up, make the fat let's up? Look as you, as... Let's use Tim Schaefer as an example. Look at Tim. Why would we face? use any one person as an example? One person is not an example. That's n equals one. Well, we're it, talking it, about science here, Harley. You said. Fasting will kill your digestion. Now prove it. it. Does. Prove it. It's not, it's not prove, saying, prove it. Prove well, life jackets work. Prove it. Like, okay, good. Harley. Harley, you 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 have fasted. To be fair, you have fasted in the past, correct? Water fasted, yeah, etc. Small fast. Okay, so why haven't you experienced the weight gain and stuff like that? You said that it ruined your ruins people's digestion. Why hasn't that happened to you? Because I, I didn't do a long one, hmm. but I, super, I supervised twenty one day fasts. And okay. so I noticed the people after that they they ballooned out. Even my friend Grant, what? who's like a ultra runner, he got he got he looked like a I never seen fat and I saw him fat. He looked he like Jack Skeleton. That's what he looks like. <laughs> but after his fast, he'd be like <laughs> his face is like a pumpkin. Then you, know, you gain weight after a fast. Not from what yeah. I've seen of his. No, you I don't. Know. No, you don't Not gain now. weight after a fast. No. Grant's lean. Wrong. But you do. When we gain another Harley Johnson fact that is made up out of Bro, you have a dad bod. Absolutely. No Again, nothing to do with what we're talking about. No, what my, well, I could be 180 shape. fucking pounds right now, Harley, and it makes no difference to the facts it we're does, talking bro, about. The facts we're talking about is you have no evidence to support your ridiculous fucking claim, as usual. Just admit it. You have no evidence to suggest that fasting will kill your digestion none i just gave right. you real life examples and that's, that's not evidence, evidence buddy that's your right, evidence. Let's, go ahead and... let's look at some evidence this is Harley, not a water gonna... bottle we need bart said evidence this is a water bottle we need scientific evidence this is a water bottle okay no we we're don't. gonna move on harley you're next. Next. that's a water bottle um yep dan quick 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 let's do uh this. the longest fast in history was done by an angus barbarian and i've talked about him in the video before he did this in 1939 and he fasted for 382 days and guess what never regained the weight whatsoever didn't mess up his metabolism resolved all these health issues and it was a medically supervised water fast all so right. that's untrue and what i saw from that's grant campbell i think he did like a 40-day water fast if i remember correctly and afterwards he was stick thin he didn't look bloated or puffy at all so i don't know where he's getting that from it sounds right. like a load of made up I'd, I'd also like to add in a little the piece here out of his asshole I did a 30 yeah. day juice fast, 1800 calories a day average, and I still am gaining that weight back. I have no idea about that one. Uh, fasting, from what I've seen, has not been that case, and I have like, extensive experience doing that myself. So uh, let's move on here. During Rider, you're going to be the next two minute man. Um, this question is for you. Starting, do you believe the V? And this is, by the way, this is the final question. So uh, after this, we're going to either go to a freestyle format. If you guys want questions to be ans answered, Throw them in super chats and we will get to the men after this. This is the last and final question that I have on my list. Do you believe the vegan diet is optimal for athletic performance, both endurance activity and explosive strength activity? Harley, 100%. you've got 100%. two minutes. I mean, look how fit I am, how little I train. I'm age 42. Look at my girlfriends. Look at the noobs who came to Thailand. Look how fit they are now. There's guys and girls out there running faster than me. Who only a few years ago were, who were nothing athletically wise. So it's hundred percent. I mean, that's, I love coaching people up and getting results for them, helping them get results themselves and nothing beats this lifestyle. That's why we have pro cyclists, Tour de France cyclists, you know, big names who are getting on board the high carb vegan thing, doing the extra sugar SIS sports company recently released beta fuel, uh, which is like a, the highest sugar containing sports drink ever. Chris Froome used that to success in the Giro. Yeah, it's, it's hundred percent. Nothing compares to it. And that's why I'm so fit, minimal training, Age forty two, and I'm beating twenty year olds in running races. So, what it's do you like, consider minimal training? We gotta, we gotta question that one. Uh, five to ten kilometers a week running, fifty k's to hundred k's a week cycling. So yeah, okay. uh, we go to my Strava and see how we This week on Strava, they did one hundred twenty two kilometers of cycling in in this week. Yeah, this week's a little bit more. That's that's nothing though for someone. That's, that's nothing. Six thousand two hundred seventy nine kilometers just this year alone. That's, that's nothing. That's like minimal. That's nothing for you. Yeah, it is. For you, but not for the average for my, person. For, for this fitness level, it's nothing. You know, for, for this fitness level, it's nothing. That's proof. Well, almost that one's at where you're at, so you can't. That's a 16 kilometers a day minimum average per day, every single day of the year. That's a lot of. That's, that's a lot nothing. of kilometers. That's laughable. That's <clears throat> laughable. As a runner, well, to keep life. a fit shape, to keep a fit shape, you're obviously not a couch potato, but I mean, that's what we're saying. But I'm anyway, so 20 seconds more. 
yeah, it's definitely the way to go. There's so many cyclists out there who train way more than me. They do 20, 30, 100,000 Ks in a year, and they're still tubby. Literally, there's a girl who did 100 and something thousand Ks in a year, Amanda Cocker, set the world record, and she's still tubby after 364 Ks a day. That's like a double century a day for a year, and she was still tubby at the end of it. She started tubby, finished tubby. It made incredible effort, though. I couldn't do that. It's incredible. It just goes to show you can't out-train a bad diet. This is the future. This is the present. This is now. High carb, right. fat for the win. Bart, we're going to move to you. You've got your two minutes. Vegan diet, optimal for athletic performance, uh, both no, endurance vegan, and The vegan explosive. diet is not optimal for anything. The vegan diet is demonstrably deficient. The vegan diet is very, very foolish. The vegan diet will undoubtedly lead to serious health complications at some point sooner or later. It's not whether it's an if, it's a matter of when. The difference between people is on their capacity to tolerate the self-abuse involved in vegan dietary ideology. Uh, the science, which I am aware of, that goes on in the background that people like Harley, who are not involved in the industry whatsoever, don't know anything about at all, backs up what I'm saying in terms of actually which athletes are performing best. It's the athletes that are they're on carnivorous diets. Um, whether he wants to accept that or not, that's no skin off my nose. And whether anybody else that's listening or not wants to accept that is also no skin off my nose. What I'm telling you is, you know, of my, not just one actually, Harley, but three advanced research degrees, two of them are exercise physiology. I do know a lot about exercise physiology. I know all the biggest exercise physiologists around the world. I do know who they're coaching. I do know what's going on. And let me tell you something. What you're saying is yet another set of Harley facts pulled out of your ass without any science behind it whatsoever. Basically, you know, it's an opinion and you're entitled to an opinion, but from someone who knows a lot more about the area than you do, dad bod or not, you're wrong. Sorry. Uh Got it's 25 seconds optimal. left, Bart. I wanted to ask that, you. That's it. I've, I've done it. Yeah. I want to. I want to ask you. Do you know any high-level vegan athletes? Have you ever heard of, of a high-level? Oh, absolutely. Vegan athlete? Yeah, there are. There are athletes at a high level okay. who are vegan. Yeah, I'm not saying they don't exist. Okay. Yeah, of course there are. Um, the thing about elite athletes is that the the primary thing that determines an elite athlete is actually their genes more than their mm -hmm. diet. So there are people who, yeah, but yeah, I mean, you look at the last that was the the sprinter there on that game changes propaganda piece. Actually, look at her performances lately since she went vegan. Not only is she no longer competitive, she's actually no longer qualifying for events at all. Apparently, there was also that vegan oh. athlete uh, Pete Sadler, who's a cricket cricket athlete. He got injured, yeah. never never healed. He was like a world class uh, cricket yeah. guy in 2012 or something. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can sit there and say my opinion is the vegan diet is optimal. And of course, Harley's going to say that because that supports his ideology. Unfortunately, what doesn't support it is the science. That's okay. the thing that's my, my area of expertise and not Harley's. So take my word for it or take his. I don't give a shit. Okay. Dan, Done. we're going to move on to you there. Uh, two minutes there, bud. Yeah, well, I'd say for some people it works, some people it doesn't. But long term, when people normally do that type of diet, they start to decline. And like a lot of people in the game changers, they're very new to the vegan diet, which a lot of time, because they've removed all the other crap, they start feeling really good. So that could be why they're getting results. It's not necessarily due to what they're eating. Um, it's due to not what they're eating, more specifically. And I'd say, like, Michael Phelps eats around 10,000 calories a day, one of the best swimmers ever, and he eats absolute junk food. Then there's people that are high-level athletes who are in keto diets, some people vegan, some high-protein, some low-protein. It's like, actually, a lot of it's got to do with consistent, correct training on a regular basis. A lot of it hasn't got to do with diet. If you listen to, oh, who was someone on Joe Rogan, the, mo the world's toughest athlete, the black dude? Um, Goggins? Oh. Goggins. He even said, I won't even tell people what I eat because it's all about the mindset and the training that I do. He even said it. It's just like, I'm not going to tell you because it's not about that at all. So you could eat pretty much anything. As long as you're eating enough with training, you're going to get really amazing results. But when you stop training for a, a long period of time, like a lot of these high level athletes do, they all start to get really overweight and so many health issues and they shorten their maximum lifespan. Got anything else to add there? You've got still 45 seconds on the board. No, um, right. I'd say definitely when I was do, being a cyclist, I was definitely doing quite well on that diet, but also on a carnival diet, I've done really well. I've tried a ketogenic diet and I found on a ketogenic diet, a carnival diet, a vegan diet, I was able to have good sports performance for sure. But I found with like having animal based foods in my diet that 
it just makes me thrive because it's not all about sports performance. I want to live as long as possible. I want to be as healthy as possible. The only people that have a high level sports performance are unhealthy. Like my health is the number one priority. So the vegan diet couldn't make me thrive. So yeah, I'm not going to do it. All right. Um, we are going to move back around to you, Harley. You've got a minute to respond. I can. There's, I've never, ever met, never heard of anyone who's doing keto who's kicking ass. There's not a single keto athlete in the world who could beat me in running or cycling. There's got that Zach Fitter guy. Carbs up. Okay, Bart, name me one name. Name me one name. Tell you what, I'll send you an email, mate, and we'll set up the match. How's that? Yeah, just say name the name. You can't, bro. You'll see, oh, I'm busy. You can't send an email. Just name one name here. I can send you an email. I will send you the email. We'll set up the match. You're lying. We'll set up the match. Okay, I'm lying. There's not a single cycle store runner who does a keto who would beat me. 50,000 bucks. I put that challenge out there years ago. Tim To Peter Atia, right? Did Peter Atia ever contact you? Harley? No, man. That Peter Atia dude's a joke. I could smoke him with one hand on the bike or run. Yeah, he, did, he, he does cornstarch. What about Joe Rogan? You said Joe Rogan beat you up the hill with the 40 pound sack. What about him? Yeah, I was, <laughs> Joe Rogan, man, like the, the human thumb. But yeah, there's no one out there. Zach Bitter does carbs. Timmy Olsen does carbs. This, this whole keto athlete is just a pipe dream to make money off losers. But what, but what about non-keto? What about losers. just more of an omnivore approach? I mean, like it doesn't necessarily have to be keto because I don't think I mean, anybody in this think, chat is keto in ketosis right now. Yeah, well, that's Bart claims the keto diet's best. But anyway, so yeah, for sure. No, Bart K does not meat. claim anything of the sort. That's slander once again, Harley. I have never said keto diet is the best. Then why do you eat just? Why do you claim you just eat meat? So that's not a keto diet. That that's is a not a keto diet, diet you ignoramus. Okay, okay. So, so just a meat diet. So eat steak for breakfast is at best for athletic performance. It's best for the environment. Let's cut down more of the Amazon to grow cows and soy to feed the cows. <clears throat> oh, okay, my right. God. The, the okay. ignorance, the pseudo facts, the, pull, <laughs> the pulling facts out of your ass continues, Harley. There is I'm no sign. Bart, Bart, you've got a minute. Bart, Nothing you've got a minute. Bart, you've got a minute. Everybody, chill. Okay. To say that a diet which is eliminates animal products, especially meat, is better for the environment is not supported by any science of any kind. Yeah. It is absolute nonsense. Pseudoscience. Vegan, the vegan diet does more damage to both the number of animals killed, maimed, etc., the destruction of the land and the soil, etc., than, than anything else. Beef farming is sustainable and natural. You know, monocropping is not. Neither is shipping plant matter around the world to feed. It's just absolutely fucking ridiculous that clowns like Harley Johnson come online and say, oh, environment, and just accept, just expect you to accept what he's saying just because he's saying it. Again, what we are dealing with here when we are dealing with explaining phenomena in the world is we need to look at scientific evidence. That's empirical. That's, in, that's scientific stuff. That's peer-reviewed articles on things that back up assertions, of which Harley has none, all right. none at all. He just all talks right. out of his hole and expects mm -hmm. us to accept it. You know, Some of you might be retarded enough to believe what Harley says. I don't think many of you are. But the R word is a bad word here in uh, in America now, Bart. The PC. Is it indeed? Okay, maybe, I apologize you know, for that. Bart. I mean, retire. I won't say it again. But that word is actually a perfectly acceptable word in the English concise Oxford Poor dictionary. Harley. It means to not have progressed to the level one would be expected to. There's nothing wrong with the word where I come from. If it is viewed badly where you come from, I apologize. But it it is it is a severe mental deficiency to claim that you have the moral high ground or the factual high ground if you are not prepared to supply a single bite or bit of empirical evidence to support right, your claim, let's move to which Harley is unable to do because he doesn't have any. Uh, Harley, save any response there. Dan, you got a minute. Anything that you want um, to add to this? I would just say, yeah, when I got on the vegan diet, so many people say about the environmental benefits and I got programmed with so much of the dogma by these evangelistic, preaching, idealistic, vegans out there and actually from what i've done i can't repeat the information because i can't remember it all but there's so much research and information to show a lot of what vegans are saying but they're actually being better for the environment a lot of it is absolute bogus and so much of it's pseudoscience and misinformation and them just lying through the teeth trying to promote the vegan agenda like crazy so yeah it, it makes you feel better about being on this diet a lot of what i've seen especially if you have grass-fed cattle it actually does help improve the environment with greenhouse gas emissions hmm. so yeah and if you look a combine harvester that is like 
going through these monocrops, what goes all behind them? All of these birds and everything, they're eating all the dead animals that have gone through it. So the amount of animals that are being killed through that means... Species is, you're saying. Crop. So small yeah. animals, yeah. no no worries. But uh, if it's a cow, feeds your family for a year, that's no good, right? Yeah, exactly. Like a cow would feed me like one cow, two cows a year. That's it. Like, ain't in the world. And guess what? In a natural environment, we eat a variety of fruits and then we'd eat a, like meat and so on. And look at all the people in the blue zones. They all eat animal foods. None of them mm. eat no animal foods. 15 to 20%, as a matter of fact. Right on the yeah. website, Loma Linda Blue Zone, but they're the highest life expense expectancy. They li- they eat between fifteen and twenty percent from animal foods. Right there on the website. So, yeah. um, any we're gonna open the floor up for about a minute there, and then we're gonna move on to uh, either questions that you guys want to bring up or questions that we get from the audience. Um, now is your chance, guys. If you want to have these three guys answer a question that you've had burning, now is your time to get it in. Um, I'm gonna see super chats more than I'm gonna see. Just the little boxes because it's hard to read that right now. Okay, we're going to open it up for another minute regarding that topic and then we'll move on to something else. Dan, look so, like you wanted to say so something. So the Amazon getting chopped mm-hmm. down, that's a myth. Amazon. Well, myth, Harley, you, have you heard, Harley, that uh, about 80 to 90% of the foods that uh, animal animals eat in animal agriculture is actually not edible by humans, is actually yeah, a byproduct yeah, exactly. of the... Mm. Uh, that's something that's been talked about a, lo- a lot recently. Um, they're talking about the foods that is actually you know, busted up, given to these cows for feed is not even edible by humans. It's a lot of the, either the leftover food, it's gone bad, or it's, it's actually just like the husks of the corn, stuff like that. Things that humans wouldn't yeah. be able to consume. Um, very fibrous pieces of the food. Yeah. I saw well, I that recently. The, they were showing I mean, 80%. The, corn, the husk of the corn. They don't right. actually give them the edible Thanks part of the corn. The, more gang. the 80% right. of the world's grain is fed for livestock. No, that's not true, Harley. That's nonsense. What's the percent, Bart? What's the percent? That's, it's, that's it's, the, that's the it's, it's, it's more like 30 to 40 percent in, in terms of the actual scientific empirical data that i've read so well that's i just read the un they said 80 percent so the well, UN why would you believe the un after the un's a conspiracy company now why would you let's, believe let's the, believe UN? the question bars. was why would you believe the un because you asked me for evidence and i give the, the un as evidence and now you're saying that so UN's you think wrong. the un is evidence okay so harley thinks the un is, is evidence okay good great so do you believe the earth is flat bar no, I don't. Of course I don't. It's no. ridiculous. Yeah. Not all. It's a ridiculous claim. It's what a like fucking ridiculous research. question, Harley. I'm a scientist, for God's sake. <laughs> the, the, but the UN is the UN's bad. The UN science is wrong, but Bart Bart K's science is right. I've seen other what? science. I've seen other uh, numbers. Is what speaking I'm speaking of world government organizations, Harley, what do you think about the ADA? Uh, their statement that a vegan diet is um, satisfactory for all stages of life, and then recently they've actually rescinded that in 2019. They're now saying that uh, babies up to six months old uh, should be breastfed exclusively. And if they can't be breastfed, they should not be on vegan supplementary products. They should be on whole animal food supplements. So what do you think about that? A hundred percent. I don't believe vegan is diet is healthy for babies. Babies Hmm. should be breastfed with human milk. hundred percent. Say say that they can't be, say that they can't be breastfed with human milk. Uh, There's satisfactory. I can let's say they can't. Yeah, then I mean, that happens. Option. Some mothers cannot breastfeed, right? So, like, that yeah, happens where they have to use formula. We live in a crazy world where we can't consume milk from other human mothers, but we consume milk from a cow or a goat. I would say... Well, I think that would be the ideal situation in that case, like, to get milk from another mother, but you can't just, you know, come up with another woman yeah, hypothetically, with breast milk. let's say you can't do that. Let's say there's no women out there who care about... Well, I mean, it. when would you be able to do that, realistically? I mean, you would have to know another woman that's equally pregnant, equally breast ready you know milk ready and here comes That'd the real steak difficult. but just look so, at the texture yeah, of this thing it's possible let's say it wasn't possible hypothetically then you'd have to test out if the baby could handle dairy or could handle goat you know for sure You've got to go with the best option in the situation you could try it on soy formula and see how, how it goes on that yeah. just try it out and see which, see which one the baby well no, the the, the, the soy the soy formula is actually from the new ADA guidelines, they're saying that that is actually not recommended. Whereas before they did, because they said that a vegan diet was suitable for all stages of life. Now they're I'll, saying I'll that. Do, I'll do personal experiments. Juicy, which one best for the baby. Because maybe, well, maybe the baby can't handle lactose or the the the, the uh, caprec acid in the goat milk. You know? Maybe it can only do soy and vice versa. Maybe it's allergic to soy, can only do dairy and no goat. So you just got to mix it up, try it out. Yeah, try it out. Okay. That's me. Well, I am. I am. 18 years vegan, mm-hmm. I'm not locked into it. If people think they're going to do better on animal products, then okay, great. If you, if you think you really need animal products, then have some chickens, have them free range in your garden or your friend's garden and, and they, eat, they eat their eggs. Everything you need in, in meat is found in eggs. 
There's no need to eat meat. I do agree with that, actually. I mean, it's not very efficient to I, eat only I eggs. I can't actually eat eggs. I've tried, but it turns out I've got an egg intolerance, so I can't actually eat them. So I have to eat. Well, then eat, eat, eat crickets, Danny. Eat crickets. Eat grasshoppers. <laughs> The cricket <laughs> <It's not animals. laughs> They're outside my house, but they're, God, that'd take me so long to collect enough of them. Jesus. Yeah, but if you give a fuck about the environment, you know, like, I, I think it's sociopathic to be killing animals to eat. Here we've got some like when when did crickets get reclassified as not an animal, for Harley? Your, uh, well, for the, we're talking the environment here. Vagina. Well, again, you're wrong about the environment. So let's talk okay. about what we're talking about here, which is you, you just said it's better park. to eat a cricket than it is to eat a chicken. Why is it better to eat a cricket than a chicken, Harley? Species Look at the environmental right. things of it. No, wrong, Harley. Why is it better for a person to eat a <laughs> cricket than a chicken? Because <laughs> it's just much better, man. It's like, Why? It's, Give us. But you actually like a thousand reasoning. crickets. Crickets aren't so sentient while oh. chickens are, man. Oh, like, so it's you know, about sentience, you think? So, so sure. uh, wh why would you think it's it's wh what difference does that make? You, you agree with me, Bart? If is a cricket, a cricket not an animal? Yes, it is. Does it have right, does it, does it not, not? Does it not have the same rights we don't really that all know. animals have? Which actually is oh, none. By so the way. you'd feel as if you hit if you hit a dog or a cat in your car, you'd feel the same as if you ran over a cricket walking to the letterbox. Come on, you know. Um, that's that's bullshit, not right? relevant. That's you're not trying, relevant. You're trying to use the species, species and argument on me, but you buy into the same thing as I do. You know, putting a value judgment, cricket, putting a care. value, putting a value on an animal. Well, what's your point? I think everybody, I is, think you agree that everybody that does put different values on different animals, but that doesn't make any difference to the fact that a cricket is an animal, isn't it? But you agree, but you agree with me. It is an animal. But you agree with me that's that right. a cricket has less you know, motive and sentience as a, a chicken or a cow. Or a it's nothing or a to do with sentience. Sentience doesn't is, even bro. come into it for me. But I don't. I don't consider that. Would you um, eat dog? Would I eat would a dog? Eat no, a personally, dog? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd, Why not? Because. See, um, now you're doing the same angle as me. No, I'm not doing the same angle as you. I, I don't do the same angle as you on just about fishing. anything, I Harley. Eat I eat. Dog. See? I eat Would wild. you? Okay, great. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with people eating dog personally, so long as they're not my dogs. Um, well, but I wouldn't, dogs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, because obviously I'm emotionally connected to my dogs. But that's about you, me. I that's not about the dogs. I don't even know where to start, dude. Like, I'm still, I'm still reintegrating into, like, my reality or whatever. I might be very attached to them. Okay, well, I have really that. big cricketalities. Guys, so, we have you, a. You agree with me. You agree I don't me. agree with you, no, Harley. I don't. You do. On anything, just about. Okay, you I'm going to quickly. An I, really, I think you're an absolute <laughs> buffoon. I think you're a fool. Okay. I don't agree okay. with you. And you're a dad bod. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. We're, guys, both of you. Okay, we've we muted. We've taken. Guys, we're both, we're both cut there. So oh. hang on one second. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to say on the end of that conversation is that as far as sentience goes, we're going to always be debating which has more sentience. It's not really fair. We have, okay, is a dog less or more sentient than a cow? It's it's a stupid debate. Um, that's why ethics is a completely dumb debate to even get into when it comes to diet. It should be 100% based on biology and how you feel and things like that. So let's move on. Uh, that's my opinion anyway. Let's move on to a donation from the chat. It's a good question. They want to debate debate the effects of testosterone levels on a high meat versus a plant based diet. We'll quickly go around. We'll give each of you guys, let's say, uh, let's say one minute to uh, to throw out what you think about that. Bart, let's go with you first. Uh, yeah, testosterone is obviously based biochemically on cholesterol. Cholesterol is the is the the substance from which uh, from which Testosterone is is made by the body. Uh, obviously, your body is capable of making perfectly sufficient cholesterol from either meat or plant-based sources. There are a whole bunch of degrees of freedom that play into what someone's testosterone level is at any given time and across time. I'm I haven't seen anything hugely convincing either way in the scientific literature that would tell me that there is a difference between populations in terms of their testosterone levels and their meaningful you know, outcomes of all of that. There's a bunch of associative stuff there. there are, there's a number of studies, but nothing there convinces me one way or the other oh. that testosterone would be okay. enough. That I'll That's go my first step. Yeah. Okay. That's really all uh, I have on that. Harley, what do you have to say about that? Uh, which part of Bart's? Uh, you can respond to Bart, or you can simply respond to the question, uh, what do you think, um, what are the effects between a high meat diet versus a plant-based diet on testosterone specifically? Uh, my, ex my experience is um, measuring testosterone levels myself, taking testosterone, not taking oh. testosterone. I would definitely say oh. that you, I have more sex drive 
as a vegan, as a meat eater? Is that, is that down to confidence? Oh. Is that down to the fact that I find it easy to get women? That's my first That's step. That's just me. I would say definitely I'm better now. From what I see with guys, I would say that sexual performance is enhanced on high carb, low fat, vegan. I would say the top three foods for yang strength, carb dong strength would be white rice. <laughs> Uh, bananas and corn, and if you go to Uganda, where that the highest do you think that's directly related to testosterone, though? Yeah, it's like why? Right, man. I mean, well, testosterone is derived from soy and from yams. No, no. What I'm it's saying is, sexual that- performance is sometimes not a testosterone direct related thing. I know, I know, low testosterone yeah. guys that are pretty horny bastards. I don't know about that. I think if you got low T, you're not going to have a very hard dick. You know. Would you say that you're you're with the T up? Would you say that you've uh, you've rock hardened up further than normal or same since just, you've been? Uh, so if you did some testosterone, why would it, you know it should be you should be even more, you know? I would say I guess it's hard to say because you need any amount of hotter women and things like that. So it's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of variables there. I agree with you, Harley. Um, God, mm, he makes a good but point, in guys. General, okay, I would say that you're going to have better sex performance and sex drive if you're eating like an African corn, rice, sugar, like a Ugandan. and bananas. Ugandan, okay. horny, horny guys, mad fertility rate, and bananas, cooked banana and rice is their main dish. Okay, Dan, what do you have to say about it? I say that I did some research recently and a lot of people say that a high protein diet that's low carb mess up your testosterone production, but there seems to be a lot of scientific uh, findings out there that that is not true whatsoever um yeah and then my question is like if the vegan diet's so good the one that durian rider promotes why does he need to take testosterone and freddie even said after his experiment when he first started doing it that he was hiding it behind her back and still taking it and it mm. seems to have caused him hair loss so he seems to have to wear a toupee due to increasing dht so much it's like hmm why do you need to take testosterone if the high carb diet is so good for your testosterone levels it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever and yeah i gave like i put ten thousand dollars down the table get me to do a carbon isotope test i show that i haven't been on testosterone whatsoever like are you willing to do that so you're for saying sure, that maybe. testosterone is pro- you know because of the uh the steroids in the past that that may have led to premature hair loss is that what you're saying well, it's like generally why, if he says a high carb diet is so good for testosterone production and high protein is not good for it, then why does he need to take testosterone? That's a bit of Harley's so on medicine there. He does like levels. to, uh, he does like to say the similar things about protein. Why, why, you know, if protein's so good for meat, then why do bodybuilders need to take protein supplements? He, it's, that's a classic Harleyism. Uh, anything else we want to bring up on this topic or shall we move on to something else? I would just talk yeah. about the testosterone or you guys got any questions to me, I can answer them. <laughs> and what uh, doesn't make sense to me i remember seeing Durham rider over a year ago and he does loads of cycling so a lot of cardio doesn't do that much resistance training and i was training like a beast for so long yeah he's mm-hmm. more jacked than me and it's like i don't do any cardio whatsoever and he's like man definitely on the juice and he's accusing me of doing juice we haven't like, told him anything yet don't fake don't fake need to use more we don't like fake and if i was going to do it i would be so transparent just like i was when i started eating meat and showing people me eat meat for the first mm. time on yeah because it's a trend danny it's a trend that you're into you're getting attention from that no, saying you use steroids isn't a trend people people look at the stigma people oh, get on i know a lot of people have done it and they get so many views and it makes their own go up on youtube Nah, like, unless, unless you got a uh, nah. If you said you took steroids in the health scene, people just disband from you. Look at the, the flashback I got, flashback I got, from being transparent in my experiments. You know, even freely try to use it against me. So it's, yeah. it's understand what you lie yeah, about. I've had to keep back as well, lies about it. Transparent, but I don't give a fuck. It's like hundred percent, bro. Make... You've used steroids. I know. <laughs> I know you've used steroids. You know. What makes you say that about Danny? Like what, you know, I mean, he's always been a very lightweight guy. He, he wasn't even really into strength training until this past year, year and a half. Like what, what about his physique? I mean, not to say that his results aren't good, but like, why would you say that he's a steroid user? I mean, he's not a massive guy. He's not. I only gained 10 kilos of muscle. That's it. 10 kilos of muscle. Like, come on, man. If I've been taking steroids, I'll go and take some like, um, Deckard, Treblalone, and just gain like 30, 40 pounds of mass. Like <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't want to do that because you identify being a smaller guy. You just like being lean and small. So you take low dose. You know, I was like trying me. to get bigger, but I couldn't because the vegan diet wasn't giving me optimal hormone production. It just wasn't working. Even in a calorie surplus, eating like mm. a mofo. Bro, you're eating well at one meal a day and you're always trying to be shredded. I did you that know, for seven months. Surplus. The rest of the time, I wasn't doing that. There's seven. no way you're, you're that lean 
doing calories surplus eat like a mofo you can't bro this is this is nonsense you can't well, it's an you absorption thing right you, abs. he probably wasn't absorbing most of that freaking shitty nah, ass uh, he was eating less noodles and stuff in the diet the meat they start meeting three times a day and i've been losing weight doing it but still maintaining yeah. the muscle mass I, yeah I, i'm also struggling to put on mass as well i have to incorporate dairy i mean even though i'm eating 2500 3000 calories a day most yeah. of the day sitting here in my chair um, yes. I mean, I'm lean, I'm strong, but I, but I'm not gaining weight as a, one would expect from eating a high fat, high protein diet, you know? Um, actually I wish it was a little bit easier to be honest with you. I wish I could <laughs> gain it easier. Uh, so that's why now okay. I'm looking into my digestion and making sure my absorption is on point. Yeah. Just get on the juice, Drew. Get on the juice. Um, you know, <laughs> low dose, Maybe. low dose is healthy. Uh, bro, you see this hairline? You think I'm trying to lose this hairline dog? <laughs> no, no, that's not... nah. Yeah, man, I'm going to keep genetics. my hair. Look at I've got as I much mean, hair as you have, Danny. Well, I don't. What's I don't that? need. Danny, I don't need the hair? juice. What's that? There is some real hair on your head. I've, I've, Matt, if you look at my videos from a few weeks ago, I've got hair. So I had a little uh, solar keratosis cut out of my scalp. Yeah. You didn't know that you had that much when I saw you in Copang Yang not longer, and then all of a sudden these hair pieces appeared out of nowhere. What's that all about? Yeah, but just look, look back a few weeks ago. I've been wearing wigs for years, but look back a few weeks ago in my videos. You know? Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's the What's, thing: if what? you have, if you get crowns or wear glasses, these are fake glasses and stuff like that. If you do that and you're a vegan, people are like, oh, it's because you're a vegan. But if you're a Hollywood actor and you get crowns or wear a hairpiece or whatever, that's fine. You know, so it's it's one thing to say, oh, Harley does this or such and such does that. And that's because you're a vegan, but it's like, well, is it? Is no, it you have to admit it's a little suspect, Harley. Right? I mean, you're you're advocating for the fruit diet, and there's a lot of people coming out and saying that it's really bad for your teeth, and then you go ahead and get a full rack of teeth. And you know, like I'm down, I'm down with all the cosmetic surgery, get the fake boobs, get the hairline, get, well, I don't give a shit, but it's hard to mm. be in that space and say that it's not doing this damage to me. And then you go and get a full rack of teeth. And then you say, it's not the testosterone isn't affecting my hairline. And then you got the, you know, the, the magic carpet, like it's a rough, you know, it's definitely potentially could have for sure. Well, it's okay. like on the vegan diet, my hair started thinning in certain areas since I've been carnivore for over 30 days. My hair is the most thick and lustrous it's ever been. So silky. It's like such high quality hair compared to before. It looks like you're cycling sister, off steroids. And my sister Lucy, she had the same issue of her hair falling out. My girlfriend, like so many females that never taken steroids in their life. What, and what? Once I said pills on a steroid. Their hair is the best hair quality ever. What are what, millions of Asian women who eat fuck all meat and have... Amazing hair. Hair's very genetic. Asians, the How old are you, Danny? Fatter and, fatter and fatter and fatter. So many Asians are so fat and overweight compared to like five, ten years ago. Because eating more fat and dairy. How old are you now, Danny? I'm 31, almost 32. How much hair do you think you have when you're 42? I can well, see your hairs have, already. None of my family's members have hair loss. So genetics can be a thing for that for sure. Just like mm. the teeth I can, you. I can see your hairs are receding at the moment. Like your teeth was definitely due to genetics and certain like you doing like fighting and stuff like that. Mm. So I can definitely give, I'm not going to say your vegan diet fucked up your teeth for sure. Cause that was definitely not the My vegan dad diet. had all his teeth out at age 30 yeah. and he wasn't yes, a vegan. So, yeah, These so are crowns for the way I don't have fake teeth. Yeah. So I've got fake teeth. Not someone there. made a, someone crowns. made a point uh, in, in one of the super chats. They said ethical vegans claim that they, that they can't be perfect. So animal deaths are necessary. And yet they point the finger at others. Hypocrites. That, that's, that's pretty interesting that like, you know, they could say that, okay, we know we can't be perfect for our health and our well-being and what we eat, but like, it's not okay for you to be imperfect and kill a cow per year and eat what you need to eat for your health and your well-being. Because I mean, every, everybody's agreeing that their food method, whether it's 100% vegan oh, or yeah. it's, it's going to be imperfect no matter what happens. So like, why are we arguing on this degree of imperfectness? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, 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 it's saying that doesn't make sense to be vegans. They're like the ethics with the animals. But so many vegans, like doing Rider, they buy MacBooks and all these other products that enslave mm. people and mm. are harming humans like crazy. So many of these vegans seem to be anti-human but pro-animal, which doesn't make any sense to me. Except crickets, Danny. Except yeah, crickets. Except, except crickets. crickets. Yeah, well, I, that's really Fuck confusing me. <laughs> why, why are the crickets acceptable? Like... I get the vegans are like absolutely not on any level, but why are they now? Oh, the cockroach milk. Oh, the like, why are they <laughs> conceding on these stupid little things? Like, just you know, just keep it 100% vegan and don't. It just blows up in their whole argument. It just proves that the whole speciesism thing is a is a pro is they are speciesist is what I'm trying to say, and they're just they're sure. the ones who get to every, choose, not us. Every every vegan's a species. I've never met yeah, one right? who, who isn't for sure because you you kill their cat. Versus a cockroach, there's a different reactions, and I'm, I'm the same. Right, I'm a species for sure. Everyone's everyone's a species. Everyone's a species. Oh, it, it, everyone is. 
uh, or the hypocrites. So I we're all going to choose uh, human it, beings. Like we're going to choose to save our child's life over the life of a cow, you know, like, or even a sure. vegan's going to do that. Give me a break. Yeah. I, I'm a fan though. If you believe in animal products, okay, I disagree. But if you believe it, I'd say, let's go for more environmental choices. Crickets. Everybody could eat crickets and eggs. As to, we could have an amazing environment with no water pollution or minimal water pollution, et cetera. We could just eat eggs and crickets and people could eat their meat, the animal products from the crickets and the eggs and the environment's great. The animals aren't getting slaughtered. I would advocate that people should get yeah. their uh, ideas about environmental science from actual science rather than from people like Harley who pull pseudo facts out of their What about farmers, Bart? Hmm? Bart? What about farmers? Like, Do you think that the farmers that are coming forth and saying, this is the way that our agriculture actually works, this is how we actually grow our food and give it to our cows, and this is the way we graze on our land, and they're yeah. the ones heavily disputing what the vegans are saying, they're yeah. the ones growing the stuff. How come mm. more people aren't listening into what these farmers are saying? In my opinion, they're the guys on the ground level. Like we would want to hear from these guys, and yet the vegans are just closing their eyes. They don't want to hear about it. Confirmation bias, it, mm. you know, ideologically driven ideas, an inability to accept the objective reality in which we find ourselves. Uh, vegan Injection. brain fog, you know, all of that kind Injection. of stuff. Injection. Yeah, no, they're not. Well, they're facts. That, that's projection, bro. Well, well, that's I mean, your opinion and you're welcome to it, but I don't agree with you as usual. Like, Harley, you've said for years that the, the fruit grown in Australia is actually really poor quality, right? Like, you said that the bananas back in the day, the bricks quality shit, like, you can't even yeah, you can't hideous. even get good stuff, right? Mm. I mean, I'm grateful, but it's, it's very poor quality fruit. Very low Yeah, so, so, like, I'm somebody who, who moved to the tropics for the best quality fruit, and in my opinion, right. it actually wasn't much better there. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, of course, you, California had better... Fruit. What's that? LA's got great LA. fruit. Yeah. Right. Sure. So LA I eat better here there. as a vegan than in Hawaii, hands down. Oh, yeah, and sure. it was cheaper too. Yeah. Um, so, and for, for uh, bullshit. you got to go to Thailand if you want the best fruit. Thailand or Davao City, Philippines. But then isn't there, hmm. yeah, yeah, boys fruit. and girls, Durian. eat your fruit, get full of deuterium. That's a good idea. Yeah. Brilliant. And fructose, even, you know, even better idea. Good. Fructose yeah. and deuterium from your fruit. Awesome. Okay. Most of the mangoes, they put calcium carbide in the box, which is an own neurotoxin and carcinogenic substance. So there's a lot of issues in Thailand with a lot of the That's pesticides. True. Embarrassing. That's true. If you go to Borneo for jungle fruit, different story. Mm, okay. That's true. All right, guys. Well, uh, we've gone a full two hours with you all. I really, really appreciate all three of your time. And I think we've done a really good format here. I think what we've done is very productive. Um, I'm going to give the floor to you guys if there's anything else you'd like to say. And then I'm going to free you all to the races and... I uh, just want to say thanks again. And, you know, the chat, I think, appreciated it. We had somewhere around 350 people in here today. So um, it's really awesome. So uh, anything else you guys want to add into yeah, this? I just want to we'll say, like, Durian Rider, if you want to become a high-level cyclist, and listen to his training tips. He knows so much on bikes, the best bikes to bear, that buy, or the advice to cycling. Like, he's definitely, like, one of the best people out there. I, I cannot knock him for that. I agree. I bought a TCR Three thousand five hundred dollar bike, and it was it was it was amazing. It was the best bike. I mean, that thing was truly a weapon. Um, now, you guys uh, want to add anything, Bart? Or, or yeah, Durham? look, if I wanted to know about cycling, bikes, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, training for cycling a little bit, maybe I, I might ask Harley. But if I wanted to know something about physiology, health, exercise physiology, you know, actual science, actual empirical stuff, then I would ask someone like me who knows something about that. Um, irrespective of what that person might look like in the opinion of someone who, you know, is completely incapable of actually being reasonable, objective or scientific in any way, shape or form. That's what I do. Uh, but you guys obviously are free to do whatever you want to do as well. Harley? Yeah, I think it's uh, take results and people who you know, take advice and people getting results you desire. I wanted to get fitter, leaner, have better with my health, have success with women. You know, digital nomad career, living in Thailand, freedom emotionally. So I started taking advice. People getting similar results that I I wanted, and, and formulated my own little plan and, and sell that and market that and push that today. I definitely think that we're, we've got an environmental catastrophe going on right now, and largely due to our desire for animal products. I understand people don't want to go vegan, so giving them an option with a cricket and egg protein options there. People think they need it. The, the, the ocean right now is we're, we're smashing the ocean. Uh, man, the fish we're pulling out of the ocean now for fish, it's, it's horrendous. You know, the sharks, the tuna, the sardines, we're pumping mercury into the ocean. We're just fucking the planet at our quest for animal products. And so I just think that you know, it's just crazy man, that we're eating animals in 2019. 
when there's if people who want to eat animals, there's options, eggs, crickets. You can walk okay. in any supermarket car park and pick crickets off the fenders of cars. You don't want to eat laugh crickets. <laughs> I've never seen a, uh, a, a cricket <laughs> on a fender of a car. That's, that's <laughs> karma-free <laughs> cricket meat right there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, karma free boys. I really appreciate it. Uh, once again, thank you so much. And we'll have to do something like this again with you guys. We'll mix it up, maybe get some other guests on the show and, uh, take care. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Wow. 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 That was an epic little meeting. I would say I'm very happy with the way that went down. Uh, thank you so much for the super chats. First of all, I'm sorry I couldn't read those guys, those while we were involved in that, uh, but I didn't want to ruin the flow of the the guys involved. And just to quickly give the shout outs to you guys that was uh, catch up with you, Planet Steez. I saw there was even more from you, Lisa Alvarez, Scrap Bus, Really Organic. She wanted us to show us uh, our abdomens um, and then have some peace. I think we had peace. I think it was pretty good uh, during Ryder in the in the debate in the channel right now. Kudos to Bart for being in this debate. Vegan Gains would never do that. Bart's game anytime, man. Um, hopefully we can get a Vegan Gains or somebody else like that out here. I think that this can carry over to a lot of other know, situations. I don't even know gotta, where to start, dude. Like I'm still I'm still reintegrating into like my reality or whatever. We're gonna have to reintegrate into our realities. Uh during Ryder, great moderation. Appreciate the the uh appreciate the shout out there. Yeah, man, I think that that was the way to go. That I'm very pleased with that. Um, and again, thank you to the guys. I think everybody would behave themselves pretty well. Um, Meat Lover with the $10. Thanks, Drew. You've done a really great job moderating this. Appreciate that. Scrab Bus wanted us to get it more into the hair. I think we I think we covered that. Uh, we didn't really have to beat the guys up. to. Uh, we didn't have to twist our arms to get into that topic, did we? Um, and yeah, T. Trevor, props, Zach Ramey, Nitter Gritter, uh, again, Meat Lover again, Zach Ramey and Shell F. Yeah, man, this was a pleasure to host. I really thank you all for being here. Uh, we had, I think, uh, peak 300-something viewers. We'll keep it going for another few minutes. I'm going to kind of give my thoughts as we trail off here. Um, you know, I think that each guy really held their ground. I mean, I think that Dan was was great. I think Dan actually is underrated with his knowledge uh, in the subjects of the health and, and stuff like that. You can really tell that he's done a lot of personal coaching with people. And I really wasn't expecting that. I kind of wanted Dan here as a, as a middle ground person that was like recently vegan. He kind of represented me in the conversation, but honestly, he probably, he probably had more to add than I did. Um, so we really, haven't told him anything yet. Jeff. Don't vape. Don't vape. Really we don't like vaping. for Dan's uh, presence here. Uh, Bart obviously coming with the facts and the science, the hardcore carnivore side. It's so interesting. Uh, you know what during writer says, I, I am also a man of, you know, demanding results and what people are telling me. And, you know, he took a hard stance on that. I feel like Bart, um, Bart made a great point about, Hey, you know, you don't need to be in 10% body fat elite athlete condition. I mean, Harley, we know he rides his bike a couple hours a day, you know, and it's, it's such an interesting contrast. Uh, I still would, I still trust my own experience, my own intuition. And that does side with what Bart's proposition is. And again, Bart says that he doesn't give nutrition advice, but I know that Bart's aligned with the, you know, the carnivore adjacent diet. And that's what I found to work best for me at this moment. Um, there's absolutely no reason or, you know, it's not like Harley convinced me to go back to veganism. I don't think that was his intention, but he definitely represented the vegan community. Well, I think that this was one of the best, you know, public showings that Harley's had, especially in the, in the face of somebody like Bart, who has a lot of scientific, knowledge and background and you know he can he can pick apart a study better than anybody as far as i'm concerned on the carnivore side so really interesting debate i think it went really really well it wasn't a debate it was a discussion round table and we'll have to do it again um we'll have to get somebody else involved i know jason fonger was in the chat i could see you there buddy you said uh danny would just love to have you answer what steps you took to resolve your health issues why not reach out to vegan doctors if you were eth ethically vegan so, you know, I'm actually going to respond to that one because I brought that up earlier in the chat, earlier in the discussion with Danny specifically, because I said, hey, Danny, you know, a, a common vegan criticism to what you just said is, you know, why didn't you see a doctor? Why didn't you see a vegan doctor? How do you know you were deficient? This and that. And again, it's like, 
it's not our responsibility as vegans who are suffering to go to vegan doctors. We've already followed the, the advice of so many vegans up to that point. It's not our responsibility to then go and seek out vegan doctors and then go and seek out vegan methods of, of, uh, of service. Like we've already done so many vegan steps that have failed us. So why are we required to continue taking steps in a, a situation that is failing us? At what point do you just cut your losses? I think we all eventually make that decision for ourselves, but it's going to be different for everybody, you know? And I'm glad that I never identified as an ethical vegan because then it would be, you know, I would be morally wrong. But again, I don't blame anybody who, even if, even if they do claim ethical veganism as their stance, you know, if you learn new information, uh, then you should have the right and the ability as a human being to fix that in whichever way you want. Oh yeah, exactly. Planetary farms. Amazing point. Amazing point. She says, it's fine if you don't seek out a doctor before going vegan, though. Exactly. You, you, the, a vegan will never take on a new vegan and be like, did you go see your doctor before you went vegan? Are you sure it's safe to go vegan? Hell no. They're going to take you in no matter what. No matter what. Oh, whatever your problem is before going vegan. Whether it's digestive, whether your hair is falling out, whether your teeth are falling out, whether you fucking, you can't, you can't go to the bathroom, you can't get your dick up. Oh yeah. Veganism will fix it. Come on in. Don't see your doctor. Don't worry about what your doctor says. By the way, if you were to go see a doctor, they would tell you that you're either eating something incorrectly or they would try and give you pills to fix it. So there's no chance that you would go vegan if you actually saw a doctor. Come to the cult, my child. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Vegan doctors will just send you to nutritionfacts.org. Yeah, they'll, they'll say, hey, follow Dr. Greger's advice. He's the guy who knows what's going on. You're like, that guy? Really? I don't, I don't know about that guy. He doesn't really look safe. Would you trust your kids with Dr. Greger? Around Dr. Greger? He'd be like one of those weird dudes that just like comes up to your baby. Can I hold him? Guy looks like a freaking weirdo. How come Dury Ryder's got this special check mark next to his name? How does this happen? Jason Fonger says, would love to have the chance to actually respond to what you're saying here. I'll read it if you if you uh, shout me out. I can barely keep up with the chat right now. So if you guys are writing to me, you better tag me or super chat it because I cannot even read it. Uh, Redheaded Princess, as I already thanked you, you said great show. Wow. I think you were here for like the entire time. That's amazing. Thank you for your support. Darren Ryder says, Gregor isn't even a real doctor. He's also a lecturer like Bart K. Well, I mean... If you want to talk about athletics, and again, I don't personally know Bart's whole resume with his, uh, you know, the teams that he's worked with as a nutritionist and things like that, or, or whatever capacity he's worked with them. I know he said he's worked with some of the um, the rugby teams, professional rugby teams, all blacks and stuff like that. Their professional team, you know, if he's gotten them results, then isn't that what matters? And I I don't know that Dr. Gregor's gotten anybody those kind of results. Maybe he's gotten people healthy. Because they're probably eating a shit diet beforehand. Both wear suits, doctor suits on social media to pretend they're doctors. I don't think Bart's ever worn a suit. But I get your point. He does have a lab coat in his last thumbnail. But, I mean, that does kind of validate him in my opinion. Who, who would we like to see next? On the uh, on the hot seat, like throw out some names. Who do you guys who do you guys want to see me get in here? I've got a lot of people who are down to do an interview that might be better off in a debate format or discussion format. Let's say it's going to be really hard coming on with coming up with more questions because we covered a lot of ground today. Matt Blackburn, okay. Thank you for reminding me again, as I requested. I will look into him. I will look into him. Vegan Gains, definitely somebody I want on the show. Ask yourself. Uh, I may be able to have a... I may be able to have a lead on it getting him. Um, Bobby's perspective. Bobby's perspective and who? You guys want to see Bobby's perspective in Vegan Gains. See, my ultimate thing would be to have Bart K, Vegan Gains... And I want to have several studies that they have to bring forth that will then be picked apart by the other guy. I think that would be the best thing. And I think 
in that case, I think Bart would just demolish vegan gains. I don't think there's even a way that vegan gains could keep up when they get down to the nitty gritty details of what these studies hold, the information that they hold. Conscious, conscious calisthenics wants Sean Baker, him, and Duran Ryder again. Did you guys like Duran Ryder on the channel? You guys like seeing him? I, I've gotten some mixed reviews from some people. Uh, why are you giving Duran Ryder a platform? He's this, he's that. A lot of allegations. I think Duran Ryder did great, and I think he deserves to be on here. Dr. Barnard and Dr. Paul Saladino. That would be a good one. That would be very professional. and That would be a high-level um, high discussion. I would like that. Vegan Gains won't do it. You guys don't think that Vegan Gains will do it. Oh my gosh, I can't even keep up with the chat. Uh, Fonger says, only 200 characters, not enough for him to properly make his points. Get me on there with Duran Rider. I'm a good example of what happens on his advice 10 years later. Uh, I will have to check on your channel. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I remember you a few years back. You did some cycling with him and... Thailand, if I recall. Um, I don't know exactly your background and whatnot, but uh, I will have to look into you. Um, a lot of time, and I'm not saying this is you, but a lot of vegans, they think they have great results and they actually don't. You know, what's interesting is I told Durian Ryder recently that he looks better than ever right now. And yeah, okay, you could say what you want about his hair, but, um, you know, his face looks fuller. He looks healthier. He just looks better. And uh, he said that he's just been eating more fat. And he says that, if you're over 25 years, what do you say? Over 25 years old, you got to either choose abs or a full face. And so he's choosing his face right now. But I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the case with people who eat a proper diet. I think that you could be 40 and have abs and have a really nice looking full face on an animal based diet. And I think it's a lot harder as a vegan, to be honest with you. Okay. So, uh, Durian Ryder wants Mike, the vegan, he would never though. The dude needs a script. Well, I can reach out to him. I can reach out to him. And what would you what would you want to talk about though with Mike the vegan? Because you're both vegans. Like, what would you guys talk about? I think he might be interested in that more than you realize. We haven't told him anything except don't vape. Don't vape. We don't like vaping. Thank you for the donation. Zach Remy. Bart dismantled and humiliated vegan gains so many times on science, gains can't even find the balls to reply. I don't think that Vegan Gains would take the debate on my channel. I have asked him. He, of course, comes up with the whole doxing thing. I think it's so stupid. He th says that Bart's going to dox him. Like, why would Bart need to go on a debate with him to dox him? That doesn't make any sense. Especially if there's an intermediary like myself who's hosting the debate. Was he scared of his little IP address is going to get out? Big deal. Bart's not a freaking computer cyber hacker, dude. You don't need to worry about it, bro. What a dork. Uh, reverse sell. Drew, if you have sources on what farmers say about the land, I would like to take a look. Um, I would recommend you going on Bobby's Perspectives channel. Look up the Ask a Farmer series. They have really good videos on there about it. And I saw some other stuff recently that's even more up to date, but uh, that's where I would start. Ask a Farmer on Bobby's Perspectives channel. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. <laughs> Darren Ryder says, I'm not vegan. I do eat pee. Nice. Uh, Mike, the vegan promotes calorie restriction and thinks carbs are bad. Okay. 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 All right. You've given me a little something to work with. I will, I will reach out. I will reach out. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. So Jason Fonger says, Iron Man 70.3 Asia Pacific champion for his age group. Check out my race results. Top 10% on Iron Man 70.3 world. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Top 10% at Ironman, 70.3 World Championship, and only his third year of triathlon. I mean, that's impressive. That's impressive. But again, that doesn't have anything to do with veganism, in my opinion. Like, you're, you're, again, athletic results. We've already talked about the wide variety of athletes. We know Usain Bolt won, broke, shattered world records, literally eating McDonald's in the Olympic camp. So, like, what are we going to say? McDonald's is a superior diet now? No. I mean, at the end of the day, you were top 10%. There's other guys who are faster than you. And guess what? None of them were vegan. So like, what do you, I mean, it's like, okay, cool. You're one of, you're one of, you know, thousands of guys. You got 10 top 10%. Great for you. But at the end of the day, you didn't win. And there's other guys who were better than you that were not vegan. So 
It's kind of like a bad point, in my opinion. You said it's at the end of 10 years being vegan. Well, I mean, it's been discussed a million times that veganism can can support an endurance sport. I mean, we know that you need a lot of carbs. That's no, It's no disrespect. Like I, When I went vegan, I started doing endurance sports. I had never done endurance sports before in my life. I went on the Rotso 4 diet, exactly what Harley advocates. I bought a badass bicycle. I started pedaling my ass up hills and riding 100 plus miles a week, doing like 10,000 feet of elevation. And I was getting a lot faster. And I felt pretty good back then. But I mean, it, it, would I have been better off on an omnivore diet? I don't know. So, you know, it's like, you, you just don't, if, if veganism was as good as the athletes that are vegan keep saying, we would be having vegan athletes all over the place, just dominating the charts, dominating bodybuilding, dominating endurance sports, dominating Tour de France. The, the podium should be all vegans, right? That doesn't make it, they're not though. They would be all vegans. Every The vegans would be winning. Every athlete would be, how do I go vegan? How do I go vegan? They'd all be clamoring to become a vegan, but they're not. So the again, the results show otherwise for the vegan claims. It's just the way it is, man. Like j- just like Harley said, he says, uh, results talk. And I and I'm with him on that. The vegan results do not talk. Okay, cool. Some endurance sports, you can perform high level as a vegan. Okay, fine. Are you performing at the top? Is it like catapulting you ahead of other people because of how amazing it is? No. And Duran Rider says, Kai Green is vegan now, LOL. Dude, you know that's a joke, bro. You know that that is a joke. The guy literally went vegan one day and had an ebook ready to release the next day. That was a 100% publicity stunt. That is such a joke, dude. Such a joke. That, I can't believe people are falling for that at all. To me, that is criminal. It's basically criminal. Redhead Princess says, Drew, you have to give DR credit for sticking around in the comments after the debate. What absolutely top-notch guest. 10 out of 10. Theron Rider is always welcome back on my channel. He's always welcome in the chat. Natasha's always welcome over at my place. I mean... Guy did great, and honestly, he held up well against Bart. He held up well against Danny. He's got his responses. He's a funny guy. He's a charismatic guy. We all know why we like Durian Ryder. We all know why he's a successful YouTuber. You know, people can say what they want about him two years ago, things that happened in Thailand and whatnot, but honestly, people should put that in the past. Um, You know, if anybody wants to talk more with me about that, they could talk to me about it in private. I I have so much more to say about that stuff. And, uh, you know, I think it's, I think he's being, being judged a little bit unfairly. That's just what I have to say about it as a man, as a man. That's what I think about it because I, you know, I've been, I haven't been in that situation exactly, but people don't realize what really goes down behind closed doors. They really don't know. You know, you got the boyfriends involved and they're trying to tell you, they're trying to like squeeze it out of their girlfriend's shit that happened. They weren't there, man. They weren't there. Everybody loves mocking during Rider. Come on. Clown Mazard says, you should keep it one verse one. The more people are talking, the harder it is to get the point across, and it's harder to listen to. Um, you know, I thought it was good, man. I, you know, this wasn't supposed to be a I'm better than you discussion. I wanted genuine diversity in the answers. Like th- this, this served the purpose that I wanted. Now you guys can let me know if, if you want it, it another way. We can maybe do it another way next time. But I happen to have all three of these guys ready to go. And shoot, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I have them all on? Jess Winton says, Drew, you haven't watched any of the Nor Vegan videos. Actually, I did watch the Nor Vegan videos. Um, and you know, hey, you weren't there. I wasn't there. That guy wasn't there. Loaded He's got up his the barn, girlfriend there. Threw a little pinch. Ooh. With a fairy dust on it, and I took a rip. <laughs> Huge fucking bong rip, dude. Thank you for the big 20. Ramy Gaines is a coward. He challenged Butterfield to a fight, and Butterfield said, let's go twice now. And now the Sook Gaines tells his followers he can't because he's not fit and needs to train. Come on, he's a fake. Yeah, don't challenge people publicly to fights and then not actually do it. That is so weak. That is so weak. 
Duran Rider says, Hannah rode me so hard I couldn't climb the doy properly the next day. She has a horse riding background and massive knockers. Does she really? Hmm. I think her face is really pretty. And what I found most interesting about that video is the title is what happened in her words. And then when it gets to the end about what actually went down after she gives her whole spiel, she's like, uh, uh, and she can't even say it. And then the guy says it in his words. The whole title is what happened in her words. And then the, the boyfriend is the one who gives what happened in his words. She didn't even say it. Put her on a lie detector test. These girls should do that. Because you know what? We know that there's going to be no criminal charges at this point. So go to, go get a lie detector test. Put your hand on the thing and then have them ask the questions. Okay, says we like you, so we put up with them. That's my favorite clip, by the way. That uh, I'm, so, I'm so glad you triggered that, Zach. That's my favorite. <sighs> Hannah sold an ebook in her Durian Writers Hypocrisy video. Wow. <laughs> That's what people don't realize. Like, all right, you've got, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up DR's butt here, but like, dude, he's hosting the, the Thai Fruit Fest. You know, he's got Freely, who's the top of the world. You know, all these chicks are there. They all want to get skinny and talk to Duran Ryder and ride bicycles up the hill with him. You know, they're, they're agreeing to come to his hotel rooms. They're agreeing to hang out with him. They all want to. They obviously have it, you know, they're, they're each other's phone numbers or whatever. And, uh, Look, Jess Winton, you're a woman, I can tell, and that's great, and you're taking the woman's side, I understand. You're saying something that you don't know what happened. You're making an, a matter-of-fact statement, and of course, if that happened, that would be difficult to talk about, but why would you talk about it on YouTube? That is not the appropriate place. Go bring it to the authorities, do something about it other than bring it up on YouTube. And I think with some of these girls, it happened multiple times, and then they're like trying to come out after the fact. I don't know about her situation, but they're trying to bring it up after the fact that, you know, come on. If you go multiple times to somebody's room and these people, look, I'm getting, I'm getting some backlash here, Harley. Look at this. Okay. says, why defend a dude like Harley? Because men that I know, and I've been in the situation before have been, believe it or not, believe it or not, taken advantage of by women. Wow. If you're in a high enough state of, you know, somebody wanting you, which I've seen happen, I've personally been there, then you know how stuff really goes down behind closed doors. Now, I can understand how somebody who's never had a woman just try and jump their ass can take these statements. That would never happen. That never happens, Drew. Yeah, it does, bro. It's happened to me. It's definitely, I mean, I, I can see why it would happen to Harley. He's a six foot one tall guy running the whole Thai fruit festival. He's got a bunch of money. He's like, he's like the guy there, you know? I've seen way crazier stuff than that happen. Listen, I have friends. Here's an example. I have, here, here's Dubson says, I agree with Drew Morgan that calling people a R-tard takes away from looking professional credible. Uh, thanks for keeping it classy. I mean, it was kind of a joke, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not about the PC culture, but we have to clean it up for YouTube. In fact, I have to keep it clean what I'm about to say right here. Um, Jess Winton says, Drew, she tried to take Harley to court, but Harley fled Thailand the day after. Um, that's not, that's not what I heard happen. Redheaded Princess makes a good point. The situation should have never been online in the first place. Exactly. Why? Why? Why online? It's like the worst thing. It looks like Jerry Springer if you bring it online. It looks like it's not serious. Harley says, no police involved. I live in Thailand half the year. Hannah told Mazard and F. Freely and all of her friends she screwed my brains out. Hebo couldn't hack it. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Okay. Okay. Dude. I'm with Harley. I'm with Harley. I'm with Harley. Straight up. Do you guys even know what really goes down? Do you guys know? You need to hang with cooler people or become cooler. And I'm not saying I'm some cool dude. I'm just saying I've seen it. I I have I have guy friends. Look, this isn't not, not me, okay? I'm going to use a, my friend as an example. I have a guy friend. 
He's six Thanks foot two. To the he's Morgan. incredibly jack. Like he's he's got a great physique. He's got an amazing face. Like the best looking guy I've ever seen in my life. Okay, one of my one of my friends. I used to go out and party with this guy all the time, in the clubs and bars and stuff like that. This guy, I've literally seen the hottest girl in the club walk up to him, fanning herself with like a napkin, fanning herself, saying, "Oh my god, you're so fucking beautiful." I, I'm about to pass out. Literally had this effect on the guy. Or on the girl, on the guy. Literally had this effect on the girl. And he's like, okay. And she she walked outside, continuing to fan herself like, oh my God. Like I, she just saw an angel. She was the hottest chick in the club. And I've, and I've seen that so many times with him. Crazy. This conversation is gay. Okay, this conversation is gay. You guys can't handle this or what? I'm just trying to explain to you that there's guys out there with high, like high enough value in the dating scene that the women you want to be with will jump their bones and they try and make it happen like that. You haven't seen ravenous women before. It just kind of shows like what your experience level is. If you think that they're like, I'm not saying something bad didn't happen. Listen to me right now. I'm not saying something bad didn't happen. But what I'm saying is that people are just absolutely not listening to the other side of it. And there's always two sides to every story. The vegan view. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The vegan view. Oh, my God. That just gave me... No. Okay, says he's lived in, uh, in LA or she. I'm not sure if it's a woman or a man. Ah, if you've lived in LA, then you understand. You should understand anyway. Listen, I know personally of a woman that was emotionally tormented by Harley. Okay? I know her very well. Not an internet person. Somebody I knew in real life. So I know that Harley is capable of, you know, some psychological torture. But... That didn't have. That certainly didn't happen with her. Everything was, everything was on the books, there, you know. So, what do you want me to say, man? Luke Gear says that's why dating is a waste of time. If you're now high value, you will always be thrown in the invisible, invisible garbage of a pile of men. Dating stuff, man. Dating stuff. Jason Joseph, four ninety nine donations strictly to purchase more steroids since you've lost your vegan gains. Oh man, come on, Jason. We lost the gains. Why were you asking me for fitness advice the other day? Better be doing them push ups and pull ups. We haven't told him anything yet, Jeff. Don't vape. Don't vape. We don't like vaping. Eli says, a lot of guys have a hard time leaving the basement when mama is putting out the best show in quality milk. Oh, my God. Oh, Harley, you've got like a lot of uh, trolls that followed to this uh, this channel. Just for you. You must feel, must feel special. This is so hard to endure. Slow finger must be uh Slow finger. What what's what's the problem, bro? You got to catch up with us. One guy, one of these guys is so smug that he pays more attention to the comment stream than the debate itself. See ya. Hannah even asked to come visit me in ADL. She said it was the first time. Ooh, okay. 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 The people who don't know this haven't been with a lot of women or even a handful of women being on the streets. Dude, exactly. Go go spend years in the streets partying, going to clubs. Man, you see some shit. And trust me, a lot of these girls aren't as innocent as they would like you to believe. Believe me. Believe me. Almost none of them are as innocent as they want you to believe. Especially when they got a boyfriend and they're trying to cover up. I'm just saying. I've seen situations like this happen. I'm just saying.
Lulzy says, if you're on the streets or go out often, you see women throwing themselves over slim and lean, good looking men. I've seen all of that. And like, you're running a risk. You really are in the modern day society. Like, it's tough, man. Like, you take home a drunk girl, like, she can say whatever she wants, man. She's got a boyfriend at home. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I've had some situations, guys, and some of them just popped up in my head. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen a lot. And I've personally experienced a lot. Honest AF says, Durian took advantage of easy women who do not value themselves. He still does. It's the women's fault for not keeping their legs closed and his wanting, <laughs> and his for wanting a sore pelvis. That's, you know, you're free to have that opinion and he would probably agree with you. It is, it is up to them to ultimately, you know, go forth with it or not. You know, I wish that we could have this like old school society where it all operated like magically, you know, 50 years ago or whatever. But, you know, man, it's tough. A lot, you know, a lot of guys want the women you're talking about, honestly, have like that good, solid, wholesome woman that doesn't do that stuff. They want that. They actually want that. But we'll, we don't, you know, we don't always get that. Even the most innocent ones, sometimes they're just like, they're not, they're not. Trust me. I could say a lot about that right now. Trust me. I could say a lot about that. And I got to keep my lips shut. Bebo put, pays Hannah's way. He would be getting no sex from her. Oof. Daddy's vasectomy is well appreciated. Wow, wow, wow. Redheaded Princess says, Drew, men generally have the advantage over women in terms of strength, though, so it would be a more psychological if a woman was to rape a man, or I don't know, how else does this happen? Good question, redheaded princess. Well, let me tell you. It can happen. And a woman doesn't need to necessarily overpower a man. But sometimes in the defense of this thing you're talking about, the R word, when a woman is doing it to a man, if he's trying to say no, you know, shouldn't his no be enough? A strong no. Like, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. Shouldn't that be enough? Trust me. It's been bypassed on two different occasions, two different women. So people, you know, you're a little naive in here. You just don't know what's up. So what I'm trying to say is if the hard no doesn't work, now you're forced to basically physically escalate the situation to physically push them off of you. And you're like, that gets really, really sketchy to like physically grab a woman and push her off of you. That's, you know... That's uh that's rough. And I've been there. So it is what it is. I'm not gonna cry about it. It's like not the worst night of my life, you know? <laughs> White Space Marines. Bring on the Yeah. Love it. Ooh. Planet Sleeve says, I'm lucky enough to have been with only one dude, super hot, 13 years. It does feel like an achievement. Seriously, good for you. That is amazing. I want that with a woman. <laughs> That's amazing. And you know what I found is that a lot of people who get together in high school years, they actually stick together the longest, you know, or young or whatever. Like if they actually are like first partners with each other, they actually have some of the best relationships, the best bonds. And there's a lot of science to back this up. If you guys go read about that on YouTube, it's all over the place. Watch it on YouTube. Well, Durian Ryder is, you know, Thanks for the he's going to do what he wants to do. Gang. Frankish says, alphas don't need to keep listing their accomplishments and ordering their girlfriends to parade themselves for the pleasure of other men. Well, you, I mean, you just don't understand marketing, you know? Duran Ryder's channel is basically built on that, and he's gotten paid for it. So I don't know if you want to consider that alpha or not alpha. I don't think it has anything to do with that. 
Redheaded Princess says, okay, that's fair. I think nowadays with how kinky we all are, the world, wait, the word no just doesn't mean what it used to. We should probably figure some way around this. Yeah, I mean, when a woman says no, it means no, right? Like, there's no question about it. But if a man says no, it's like, give me a break. Give me a break. And then they will physically push it on you. And it's happened to me. Yes, it has happened to me. Drew got owned by a hefty stepmom, in my in my opinion. The feels. No. They weren't hefty. Neither of them were hefty, actually. One actually is insanely gorgeous. Um, and I still said no. And the other one, I didn't, I didn't want to. But she wasn't fat. Again, not the worst night of my life. I'm not, I don't have PTSD from it. But, it. but I'm telling you right now, it would have had to get physical to make it stop. I'm just telling you, that's a fact. Oh, we've got Durian Rider. We've got Bart. <laughs> Bart is deleting Durian Rider comments. Oh, no. Hang on. I want to see it. Ooh, okay. Well, that's a smart comment to uh, delete Bart, but I I agree with Durian Rider on that one. We might have to shut this down. We might have to shut this down. We're, 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 uh, we're, we're getting a little crazy here. We're getting a little crazy here. Drew is a victim. No means no, ladies. Yeah, that means that means no. Right, Allison? Right. That comment made by Duran Rider was inappropriate. It was not factual or scientific. I think it was a smart comment to delete. Thank you, Bart. Hmm. Okay. Guys, I'm loving the conversation, but I'm also loving the idea of me cooking a steak right now. And we've been rocking over three hours, three hours and 15 minutes. We had an amazing time tonight, and I think it's about time to shut it down. So you all have an amazing weekend. I'm so glad what we did tonight. We'll have to do it again. For those of you who are here for the full three hours and 15 minutes, you're amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed the new alerts. Uh, I'll have to make some more edited content for you guys this week, and maybe we'll get another midweek stream in where either it's just me or we have on like one guest and we have some sort of good conversation going on. Um, you guys can let me know. I'm open to feedback. You guys know I like to get it in with the chat over here on the side. That's super fun to me to, uh, you know, to what's the word I'm looking for? to uh, interact. It's super fun for me to interact. All right. Uh, we are going to shut it down. Once again, appreciate it all, everybody. Have a good night.